ba na dun sa latest na Digital 2021 na report, ang sabi ng We Are Social, number one tayo in the world. Filipinos spend 10 hours and 56 minutes on the internet on any device daily. At ganun din, ang mga Pilipino rin, 77.1% ang gumagamit na, o nanonood ng TV content via streaming services each month. At tayo raw sa social media, pag pinag-combine natin yung mga minutes na paputol-putol na paggamit natin ng social media, lalo na through our mobile devices, umaabot daw tayo ng 4 hours and 15 minutes on social media each day. So curious ako sa mga taga-SK. Ilang minutes kayo online every day o ilang hours kayo online every day? Meron ba sa inyo walang tulugan? Can you type the number kung nakakailang hours kayong online every day? Tingin nyo yung aggregate pag pinagsama-sama yung mga minutes na ginagamit sa computer, sa cellphone. How many minutes kayo online every day o ilang hours? O sabi ni Shannon, 6 hours. Wow. Less than 3 hours, 10 hours. Wow. So talagang hindi nagkakamali ang ating stats. no? Ganun karami ang... Uh, nago online every day ha at nagbabari yung mga hours okay merong half day at i assume lahat din kayo gumagamit ng mga nanonood kayo ng mga TV content online gaya kami nanonood kami ng probinsyano araw-araw sa YouTube no except nga lang sa mga araw na walang episodes no o kaya Netflix di ba Pagkatapos, gaya ko, kanatapos ko lang recently ng blacklist kahit na may bagong season na, hintay na lang muna na lumabas yung bagong season pag lumabas na siya sa, net, sa Netflix. O, o unless si Vincent Cesano na ang pinapanood niyo sa Netflix ngayon. No? O kung sino pa ang mga iba niyong paborito ang pinapanood. Um, okay, I'm curious. Okay lang ba sa inyo? Can you caption this? Caption this. Nakikita niyo ba yung image? Ano na iisip niyo dyan? Can you caption this? Anong pumapasok sa isip niyo? Okay. Selfie lang. Caption nga eh. Lagyan niyo ng caption. Di ba? Parang ano lang. Oh, selfie lang. Proof of life. Okay. DGSS. Losing all the food I ate last year. Guwapong guwapo sa sarili. Signal is hard. <laughs> Hotter than your ex. Okay. <laughs> oh, diba? <laughs> Hashtag I love me. Alright. Um, maraming dahilan no? kapag gumagamit o oh, shout out to my ex. Okay. <laughs> oh, diba? Oh, Alatang in-enjoy ko lang yung sarili ko basahin yung mga caption nyo. Pero I think Marami sa atin gumagamit ng social media o gumagamit ng media in any forms. Mapa-social, mapa-YouTube, no? mapa-paggawa tayo ng website para may express ang ating sarili. At may mga para-paraan tayo na pag express ng ating sarili. Pero at the same time, because of everything that we're saying... <laughs> Teka muna, i-hide ko yung chat. Di ako makakonsentrate. <laughs> Magnamabasa ko yung mga tinayo na. Okay, anyway... Um, okay, balik ako, balik ako. Oh, diba? Sana kayo nakatawari kayo sa mga nabasa niyo sa caption. Pero anyway, ang ano doon is um, pag tinignan niyo yung mga pinopost natin uh, because of our parang sensitivity to the use of uh, social media, um, halimbawa, may nakita tayong galito. Iba-iba nakikita natin, di ba? Pwede sabihin ng isa, uy, ang guwapo naman niya. Pero pwede naman sabihin ng isa, nakong arte naman yan. Pwede sabihin naman ng iba, uh, ah, ano yan, baka, baka ano, nagpaparamdam sa kanyang ex, no? o kaya naman nagpaparamdam sa kanyang future. No? So, iba-iba tayo ng interpretation. Kaya, ibig sabihin, pag, pag ganyan sa social media, lahat na nababasa natin online, hindi rin tayo pwedeng basta makapag-conclude. No? A picture, sabi nga nila, can say a thousand words, at iba-iba ang maaaring maging impression natin sa ating mga nakikita online. No? Alright. Kaya pag sinabi natin media balance, according kay commonsense.org, it is all about yung paggamit natin ng social media na mababalance pa natin yung ibang activities natin sa buhay natin. Kasi di ba yung social media, by default, um, ano ba mga ginagamit nyo? Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, ano ba mga ginagamit nyo? Can you share? Ano ba mga paborito nyo yung social media channels? TikTok, no? 
Ako, ginagamit ko na rin ngayon si joinclubhouse.com. Kung sakaling hindi pa kayo nasa clubhouse, yan ang mga magiging next na hates. Ha? Minabalitaan ko na kayo. Yang joinhouse, joinclubhouse.com, yan ang, mga, yan ang magiging isa sa mga next na hates na social media channels. Although ngayon, iPhone users ang makakapasok. By March yata, makakapasok na rin pati ang mga Android uh, users. Pero... Ang point doon, pag tinignan niyo yung mga iba't ibang social media uh, platforms, lahat sila may kanya-kanyang hook, di ba? Kaya tayo nagiging attached sa kanila. Tingin niyo, bakit paborito niyo yung mga social media channels na gusto niyo? I think, uh, bakit niyo paborito si Facebook? Bakit niyo paboritong gamitin si Instagram? Bakit niyo paboritong gamitin si TikTok? Can you share kung ano yung mga reasons? Bakit kayo... Bakit tingin nyo, nagustuhan nyo siya? Okay, information, easy access lang. Ako gusto ko si Clubhouse kasi parang automatic, parang palagi ka nagpa-participate in a talk show radio. Pwede rin kaya mo gusto si Facebook kasi kahit araw-araw pwede kong tawagan ng aking mother at kumustahin ko siya. No? Uh, at nakakausap ko yung mga friends ko, kagaya ni Gab, no? nakakapagkamustahan ka rin sa mga friends mo online. At pwede rin because of Instagram, o kanina hindi ako nag-Facebook live, nag-Instagram live ako, biruy mo gab, first time ko nag-Instagram live, o di ba? Uh, para lang para lang sa event na to at para masabi makatry tayo ng something new. So maraming reason kaya tayo nakuhook no sa mga iba't ibang platforms na ginagamit natin. Pero ang challenge doon, uh, maaaring sa inyo mga SK leaders, kayo ay very matured na at kaya yung kontrolin yung paggamit yun ng internet at ng social media. Pero paano yung mga younger generation ngayon? No? Actually, pututusin nga yung sinasabi nila paano tayo nahuhook sa internet. Lahat tayo may challenge dyan. No? Kaya paano tayo makakapag-maintain uh, ng healthy balance no? at para hindi naman tayo masyadong um, ma-stuck doon. Pero kayo, tingin nyo, are you happier nang nang naka-internet kayo o mas nalungkot kayo dahil kayo ay nasa online. Curious ako. Some people say they are happier because they are connected online, pero some say mas malungkot sila dahil online sila kasi parang feeling nila they para bang na, 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 nandun ka palagi sa situation na nako-compare mo yung sarili mo or pwedeng nabo-board ka. How do you feel? How do you feel being online? Diba? Iba-iba ang nararamdaman nyo, diba? Sabi nyo malungkot, 50-50, engage, no? So, iba-iba ang pakiramdam natin. Kaya minsan, I don't know about you, di ba minsan, may piniting na ka sa internet, tapos parang bigla, ay, ano ba yan? Bigla isasara mo siya, kasi parang, parang feeling mo, parang napaka-offensive nung content, di ba? I'm sure nakakita na kayo ng ganong content, pero may mga content naman na, I want more, I want more, I want more, no? May ganun naman na feeling, no? So, iba-iba ang mga emotions na naramdaman natin sa internet. At yan, yeah, paggamit ng iba't ibang forms of media. Kaya nandun yung challenge sa atin, pag sinabi media balance, paano natin ma- makokontrol yung oras na ginagamit natin no? sa paggamit ng online content? At uh, sabi natin na, halimbawa, dati hanggang madaling araw, nako online yata ako, kaya ngayon, pag natapos na ako ng, halimbawa, today matatapos yata ako alas 6. Pagdating na alas 6, ano lang, hmm, Shutdown, tapos nalabas na ako. Hindi na ako talaga babalik sa computer ko. Dahil kung hindi, ala na, talaga want to sawa na. Hanggang sa antokin na lang. Eh. Misan, nakakatulog ka na sa upuan mo. Biglang magaganong ka na lang kasi <laughs> ayaw mo pa tuwigi sa pag internet I'm sure sa inyo may guilty rin doon. No? Aminin, aminin. Alright? Sige. So, tuloy tayo. Um, and I think because of this uh, development, Marami rin tayo mga nakikitang exposure natin sa paggagamit ng online, no? Nandiyan yung uh, na-expose tayo to fake news. According nga sa We Are Social, 57.2% of Filipino internet users concerned sa real at fake news. Alam niyo bang tignan ang real and fake news o nabibiktima rin kayo ng fake news? Meron ba sa inyo nabibiktima ng fake news? Kung ikaw ay nabiktima na ng fake news, can you type 2 sa chat box? Ha? Na, nabiktima na ba kayo ng fake news? Meron ba sa inyo na dali na? Okay. Yung akala nyo totoo, fake pala. No? 
Parang nung nawala si Aliana sa probinsyano, biniro ako ng asawa ko. Sabi sa akin, ano eh, ano raw, nabuntis daw si Aliana ni Cardo. Sabi ko, ano to? Totoo ba yan? So, sinerge ko pa agad talaga sa internet. Sabi ko, chismis lang yan sa YouTube. Last year pa, hindi totoo yan. No? So, maraming mga real and fake news, di ba? And ganun din, no? 38.2% din ng internet users ay nag-aalala kung paano ginagamit ang kanyang personal information. At 45.3% ng internet users ang gumagamit daw ng tools para i-block ang online advertising each month. So, I think, nagmamature na tayo, no? So, sabi nga ni Rojin, tama ba ang pronunciation ko ng pangalan mo? Okay, Rojin, sana tama ang pronunciation ko, ha? Uh, pwede naman natin ma-detect, pero syempre, may mga taong hindi maka-detect, no? Like ako, like yung mga parents natin, minsan, di ba? Kung ano yung mga pinag-forward sa atin, sabihin mo na lang, ma, fake yan, wag mo i-forward yan. No? Kasabihan mo na yung nanay mo, no? And ganun din, no? Um, yung online blocker. Meron bang gumagamit sa inyo ng ad blocker? May gumagamit ba ng ad blocker sa inyo? Kung ikaw, mahili ka manood ng Korean novela online o mahili ka maglaro ng games, kung ayaw mo makakita ng ads, gumagamit ka ng uh, ad blocker, di ba? Para huwag kang makakita. So, pag hindi ka gumamit ng ad blocker, kada panood mo ng episode, magtiis ka, manonood ka ng tatlong ads. Tatlo hanggang apat na ads, no? Bago ka mak- kada episode, hanggang sa mabuisit ka na at sabihin mo, later mo na lang siya panonoorin. So, kasama siya sa mga exposure natin when using the internet. And I think part yan ng mga challenges natin kapag gumagamit tayo ng online. Kaya kailangan talaga yung concept ng media balance, no? yung pag-control natin ng paggamit ng internet natin para maprotektahan naman natin ang ating well-being at maging maunawain tayo sa mga nakikita natin online. Uh, at least mas mag-build din yung empathy natin no? at hindi tayo basta-basta maghuhusga sa mga iba't ibang content na nakikita natin online. Pero talaga, bilib ako sa inyo, magaling kayo mag-caption. Next time, talaga maglalagay ako ng ganyan. At uh, mukhang benta pala ang nagpapa-caption ng content. Okay, so ang isa na concern na gusto natin pag-usapan, yung concern pagdating sa data privacy. Nabalitaan niyo ba to yung 3.3 million kasyalo users personal data sold on dark web? So maraming alalang-alala dyan, no? Kasi yung mga data natin, Uh, uh, data ng mga kasyalo users na compromise yung kanilang username, yung password, birth date nila, contact number nila, lahat-lahat. Kaya minsan, kung kaya pa merong mga sinasabi sa inyong salihan na app dahil sinasabi makakautang ka raw o kung ano-ano pa, huwag tayo basta sasali kasi isipin mo lagi, kailangan ko ba talaga to? Sa ganitong paraan ba talaga ako gagamit ng sa ganitong paraan ba talaga ako kukuha ng pera at yung information na dapat kong i-share worth it ba siya? Tapos ganun din, marami tayong nakikitang scam online, no? Yan nga Philippine regulators warn 350% return on digital currency. At uh, maraming marami mga ganyan tayong scam na nakikita ngayon. Kaya nandun yung responsibility na dapat tayo ay mas mag-ingat dun sa mga nakikita natin online at huwag tayo basta-basta nagpapadala dito. And because of that, uh, siguro ang gusto kong gawin ngayon, i-remind kayo dun sa mga iba't ibang tips no, sa online safety and cyber security at sana makatulong to sa inyo para maalagaan nyo yung sarili nyo. No? Kailangan i-secure natin yung mga devices na ginagamit natin, ang ating identity, ang ating data at mag-ingat tayo sa mga scams. Kung gumagamit kayo ng Facebook, Uh, pag pumunta kayo sa inyong security settings, pwede kayo mag-enable no tiyatawag na two-factor authentication para hindi basta-basta makaka-login sa inyong account. Pwede rin kayo mag 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 uh, mamili ng 3 to 5 persons na pwedeng mag-vouch ng inyong identity kapag kayo ay na-lock out para hindi kayo mahirapan na ma-unlock ang inyong account. Uh, pwede rin kayong gumamit ng encryption, uh, authentication tool para kung maglalagin kayo sa ibang device, i-authenticate muna ang identity nyo para wa- walang basta-basta makakalagin sa account nyo. At kung nagsisave kayo ng password sa inyong browser, uh, may mga tools ngayon si Chrome, no? sasabihin niya kung yung password mo ay compromised kaya kailangan mo itong palitan. Kaya pag halimbawa, nagulat ka na parang biglang nag-auto forward na yung messenger mo sa ibang tao, baka naman na-compromise ka na. No? Kaya kailangan tanggalin natin yung mga apps at palagi tayo nagpapalit ng ating password. 
So para mabantayan natin ang ating identity at privacy, ayan, hanggat maaari, huwag sana tayo mag-share ng personal data online. Kapag may bisita tayo ng website, siguraduhin natin na kung website siya ng banko, yun talaga yung pupuntahan natin. At huwag din tayo magbigay ng password or other personal information via email or text message. Minsan, may pinirmahan akong kontrata, kapos sabi ipapanotaryo daw. Alam niyo kung anong hinihingi sa akin? Hinihingi, ng, hinihingi yung kopya ng passport ko, kapos magbigay daw ako ng tatlong specimen signature, yung kapirmahan ko. Sabi ko, uh, parang hindi yata. Parang hindi yata ako okay dyan kasi the moment bigay ko sa iyo yung passport ko at tatlong specimen signature, pwede ka na mag-open ng account in my behalf. Pwede ka na magpanggap na ikaw ako. No? So, kaya lalo-lalo na kapag hinihingi ito at ipapadala lang sa email, huwag kayong basta-basta papayag kasi masyado yung pinuput ang inyong personal information at your risk. No? At huwag tayong mag-share ng video until necessary at kapag hindi natin kilala yung tao, huwag tayo basta-basta makikipag-meet online at magpapakita ng video. Okay? At kung atin kayo ng meeting, kagaya nito, hello, hello, di ba? Uh, kailangan siguraduhin nyo rin na kapag uma-attend kayo ng meeting, kailangan alam nyo sino ang a-attend. Kung kagaya nito, nire-record ang webinar natin, so alam nyo nire-record siya, so... Mag, maging, maging, maging cautious ka kung anong information ang isi-share mo. Tapos yung chat natin, masasave ba siya? No? At uh, pwede mo bang i-blur ang background mo o pwede mo ba siyang i-change? No? Depende sa mga tools na iyong ginagamit. Okay? Um, gets ba natin siya? Copy-copy tayo. Copy? Copy ba tayo dyan? Kung copy at nag-gets natin siya, can you type copy sa ating chat box? Kung gets natin siya, Nako, maraming salamat sa inyong participation. At ganun din, no? dun sa pagpapotect natin ng ating data, huwag tayo basta-basta magda-download. Ha? Piliin natin yung mga ida-download natin, siguraduhin natin na legit siya. Kasi baka mamaya may kasamang virus siya, Trojan o kung ano-ano pa, mapahamak pa ang computer mo. So, kung bibili rin tayo ng mga products, no, make sure na yung mga pagbibilhan natin online store ay secure at kung maari sana, meron na nakatry bumili doon. Hindi yung ikaw lang ang first na bibili, no? Unless talaga kilala mo yung may-ari. At kung merong mga files tayo, wag tayo makontento na yung files natin nasa hard drive lang natin. Kung pwede, meron tayong backup copy sa cloud o may backup copy tayo sa USB at siyempre na sa bahay lang dapat 'yon at hindi natin 'to Uh, nilalabas. Kung magloko ang computer mo, then immediately kunin mo kagad ang hard drive, ilagay mo sa isang external casing at itabi mo siya para kahit pa paano, nandun pa rin ang data mo at maari mo pang ma-access. Okay? At kung makakakita tayo ng mga scam, like halimbawa, um, misa may tatawag sa'yo, ma'am, uh, taga ganitong company ako, o taga ganitong banko ako, meron po kayong transaction na ganito, gusto ko lang po sana i-validate. Pwede, pwede po malaman ang birthday nyo, complete birthday nyo, para po malaman namin na kayo talaga yung kausap namin. Huwag mo ibibigay ang birthday mo, kasi yung tanongin mo sa kanya, paano kung alam na talagang ikaw yung banko ko? No? Ikaw na nga ang tumatawag sa akin, ako pa ang mag-authenticate sa'yo. Ikaw pa ang mag-verify kung ako talaga yung kausap mo. Ikaw ang tumawag sa akin. How do I know na you are who you claim to be? No? Kaya kapag halimbawa may kumukontakt sa inyo at nagsasabing ganito sila, ganyan sila, at the moment humingi siya ng personal information, birthday mo, full name mo, address mo, kung alam mong walang dahilan para tawagan ka, huwag ka magbibigay ng information. At hanggat maaari, hindi ka dapat nagbibigay ng ganong information over the phone unless ikaw yung tumawag at nag inquire ka at talagang kailangan mo mag-validate. No? At ganun din, uh, lahat ng mga websites na pinupuntahan natin ulit, no? hanggat maaari, huwag tayo basta-basta magkiklik at huwag natin siya basta-basta rin isi-share at huwag din natin siya basta-basta ia access siguraduhin muna natin na legit natin siya at ganun din no pagdating sa data privacy think before you share at dapat aware tayo pagdating sa data privacy law uh, kagaya nung halimbawa kapag meron tayong i-share na photo kapag merong minors doon no nakikita ba yung mukha nila identifiable sila protected ang mga minors no kaya minsan nga nakakatakot kapag yung parents post ng post ng pictures ng mga anak nila no kapos public pa parang nako-compromise yung privacy ng mga minors, di ba? Ganon din, personal, sensitive personal information ba siya? Nakatanggap ka ng pera, nakalagay doon yung bank account number at saka validation, pipicturean mo, kailangan mo ba talagang ipublish yun? So, aren't you compromising your information? 
kapag ikaw ba may meron ka nakitang alimbawa sino ba maganda halimbawa si Dax Dax kunwari meron naglagay ng sulat sa bag mo at nilagay doon sa bag mo isang makapagdamdaming love letter okay at sabi nung sumulat sa iyo talaga matagal na kitang hinahangaan matagal na akong uh, may ano uh, um, may paghanga sa iyo at uh, believe na believe ako sa iyong galing no gusto ko sana malaman kung gusto kong, kung gusto mo magkakilala tayo yes or no pag yes Uh, mag-post ka sa Facebook mo ng thumbs up pag no, mag-sad face ka. No? Pero ang ginawa mo, <laughs> Dax, okay ka lang. <laughs> pero, pag, pero ang ginawa ni Dax, uh, imbis na mag-post siya doon according sa aking instructions, pin- pinicturean niya yung letter at pinost niya sa Facebook at sabi niya, ha ha ha, nakatanggap ako ng, ng, uh, ng crush letter. No? Ang funny funny naman. No? Tapos eh, ang tanong doon, magkakos ba siya ng irreparable harm? Paano kung yung handwriting, meron na kamuka, meron na ka-recognize ng handwriting? Ah, si ganito 'yan, no? At uh, dahil na-identify yung person na sumulat na 'yon, pwedeng napatawag 'yon, na, 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 na pagpiyestahan siya ng mga pagpipintas sa kanya, pagkakantsaw sa kanya. So as a result, kahit na hindi mo gusto, nag-cause ka ng irreparable harm to another person, no? At uh, maari rin na uh, para ka na rin naging accidental bully in the process. So minsan pwedeng may ganyan din tayong situation na makikita. Kaya kailangan bago tayo mag-share, isa rin yan sa mga iisipin natin, will this cause irreparable harm uh, to others? Okay? Kaya yung data privacy law natin, tandaan natin na kailangan Uh, <laughs> sorry na kagad. <laughs> That's joke lang. <laughs> okay. All right. So sabi na sa data privacy law natin, so you we protect the information that we collect at huwag tayo mag-misuse ng information. So the moment makakolect ka ng data, alimbawa, nakolekta mo yung, alimbawa, gaya ko, alimbawa, nakuha ko yung mobile data ni Dax, so yung mobile number niya, hindi ko pwedeng i-misuse yung information na yun at bigla akong sabihin, oh, ito ang mobile number ni Dax at sabihin nyo, i-text nyo siya lahat at sabihin nyo na uh, mag-ano na siya, lumipad na siya sa Mars. Okay? Parang ganun, no? Pag ginawa ko yun, I'm already misusing yung kanyang uh, personal information. At huwag tayo mag-share ng information without consent at huwag din natin gamitin ang data sa mga bagay na wala tayong consent. At kapag halimbawang um, na-compromise yung system natin, like halimbawa yung laptop mo na wala, tapos na doon yung records ng lahat ng SK members nyo sa buong probinsya nyo, so compromise yung data na yon kailangan i-report kagad natin yan sa National Privacy Commission, especially kapag more than 100 records ang involved at maaring uh, lalo na kung nagko-contain ito ng mga sensitive personal information. Okay? Copy ba tayo dyan? Can you type to kung okay pa kayo? Okay pa kayo? Yan, sige. Salamat, salamat sa inyong pag-confirm kung okay pa kayo. Kaya kung kayo ay victim ng cybercrime o kaya naging victim kayo ng data pri- uh, mga iba't ibang violation, no? lalo na kung cybercrime ang naging apektuhan kayo, uh, pwede kayong mag-complain sa PNP Anti-Cybercrime Division. No? At uh, kung sa, sa privacy naman, pwede kayong pumunta, pumunta sa privacy.gov.ph at mag-file ng complaint. Kasama na rin dyan yung mga nagte-text ng patapos mong sabihan na huwag ka na magte-text sa akin. No? So, tigilan mo na yung pagpapadala sa akin ng mga kung ano-anong inaalok mo. Tapos tuloy-tuloy pa rin siya kahit na may narningan mo. O pwede mo na ireklamo yun sa Privacy Commission. Okay? So marami tayong mga protection ngayon na hindi lagi exist before. Sige, tuloy na natin ang ating usapan. Okay? So... Ay, ito naman, no? pag-usapan din natin, uh, marami tayong mga nakikitang content sa online. At isa sa mga nakikita natin nangyayari ngayon, yung nagka- gumagawa tayo ng fake account. Gumagawa tayo ng second account. Ako yung second account natin, wala sa pangalan natin. Nag- nangyari na ba sa inyo yun? Yung meron kayong Facebook account na hindi totoong pangalan yung nakalagay, nakalagay alias, no? At minsan, yung second account na yon ginagamit natin for purposes of expressing our opinions kasi parang hindi natin magamit yung primary account natin 
in expressing our opinions, no? So minsan nangyayari yung ganun, no? Kasi sabihin natin, pag ginamit ko kasi yung personal account ko, ang dami kong makakaaway diyan, no? Kaya gumawa ako ng second account para do sa second account ko, doon ko i-express lahat ng opinion ko para hindi hindi yung merong mang-aaway sa akin, no? So So, nangyayari yung ganong situation ngayon. Pero, meron namang iba na ginagawa siyang negosyo. No? Kaya yan, may meron tayong mga nakikitang troll, meron tayong mga nakikitang mga account na ang role lang nila ay mag-post ng fake news. No? At, uh, pero, hindi naman porket nakakita tayo ng troll, iniisip kagad natin, peke na yung account niya. Pwede totoong user siya na hindi lang siya makapag-express ng sarili niyang opinion using yung sarili niyang account. O yan. Sabi nga nila, alter account. Kung sa SIM card yan at meron kang pangalawang SIM, SIM card, tawag natin doon, ninja SIM, di ba? Parang meron kang ninja SIM. Okay? Or dummy account used for various purposes, sabi ni Nika. Okay? Thank you very much. At dahil dito, marami tayong, kaya minsan magraming usapan pagdating sa freedom of expression, no? Uh, kagaya dito, meron tayo nakita ng news article na gumubas uh, last year no? na kung saan yung mga posting daw tungkol daw sa mga school activities yata kailangan ipaalam sa isang eskwelahan at medyo umaangal yung mga estudyante ron. Tapos syempre, yung mga pinupost natin sa social media, ang, ang tanong dyan, is that the real you or is that the curated you? Okay. Is that the real you? Or is that the curated you? Di ba? Pag real you, eh, talagang yung ikaw lang talaga. No? Yung, pati yung kita yung kuko mo, haba-haba, di na, hindi mo na napuputulan, di ba? ano talaga itsura mo. Pero pag curated you, of course, you put your best foot forward. Ika nga, yun yung tiyatawag natin. No? Kaya minsan, na, na medyo nagiging blur, blurry kung ano ba talaga yung... Totoo, no? Kaya oh, sabi nga ni Oliver, yung highlights, no? Kaya kaya minsan, wag tayo gaano magpapaapekto dun sa mga nakikita natin online. Kaya na tinanong ko kayo, are you happy or sad? What is what do you feel when you use digital media, 'di ba? Sabi some of you said sad, 'di ba? Kasi syempre, nakikita niyo yung mga post ng iba, pero kung tutusin mga curated you yun rather than real you. No? Uh, karamihan ng mga nakikita natin online. Tapos nandyan din yung pagpo-project natin ng ating digital identity. Uh, according nga kay commonsense.org, pag sinabi nating identity, ito yung different parts of our culture, experiences, and interests that makes you unique. Yan ang, yan ang bumubuo ng identity mo. No? Kaya nga kaya nga siguro, yan, kasama na dyan yung pagpo-post natin ng selfie para mas mapakita natin, natin yung sarili natin. Pero meron pa nga isang trend, di ba? Yung sharing thing. Yung, di ba nakikita nyo yung mga baby, yung pinuporma-porma nila tapos kinukunan nila ng picture. Yung aso nila, yung pusa nila, at binibihisan nila, lahat-lahat kinukunan nila ng picture. Kasi proud sila, no? Pero ang tanong doon, kagaya doon sa bata, um, an ano, kaya, ano kaya yung effect doon sa bata? Parang kayo, I'm sure naranasan niyo na, na nung baby pa kayo, meron kayong ano, nakunan kayo ng picture na kita yung likod, di ba? Nung mga baby pa kayo. Kasi tuntuwa yung parents niyo, no? Parang feeling, kaya pag alimbawa nagkaroon na kayo ng girlfriend, boyfriend, pinakita yung album mo, halos takpa mo yung mga picture na yun kasi ayaw mo nakikita siya, di ba? So, misa may mga ganong feelings, no? Pero kayo, What do you feel? Do you do you agree na dapat yung mga pictures ng bata, yung mga anak-anak, apo-apo, pinopost online? What's your take on that? Okay lang ba siya? So, gaya-gaya niya, no? Iba-iba tayo ng opinion, di ba? Kasi parang bina, binaviolate ba natin yung kanilang privacy? Binaviolate ba natin yung rights nila kapag sineshare natin no so depende rin siguro kung ano yung opinion natin diyan no kung hanggang saan yung pagpo-post natin at kung saan natin siya nilalagay siguro kung friends only relatives only lang ang makakakita pwede pag pero pag ginawa na natin public ah, yan siguro no at lalo na kung nandoon na tayo sa point na dine-dress up na talaga natin sila para la for photography purposes medyo doon din nag-iiba at sineshare natin publicly no sige at lahat ng ito yung yung ano yung pinopost natin online tungkol sa ating sarili at lahat yan parang nagpo-form part siya ng ating tiyatawag na digital reputation no yung curated self at versus our real self 
what people think about you based on what they see online, yung social media post mo, public information, yung news, no? Parang yan yung tiyatawag natin part ng iyong personal brand. Kaya nga kanina eh, yung is it the real self or the curated self ba yung pinapakita mo? Tapos di ba, minsan may mga nakikita ka nagpo-post, Hi, I'm busy-busy ko today. Meron akong webinar sa umaga. Meron akong kamiti sa ganito. Mamayang tanghali, kausap ko naman sa ganito. Mamayang hapon, may meeting kami ng ganito. At mamayang hapon, meron pa akong kamiti ng ganito. Grabe, sobrang busy ang buhay. Di na ako magkanda o gaga. Anong tawag sa post na ganon? Uh, anong tingin nyo doon? Anong tawag sa post na ganun? Yung parang pinagmamalaki niya yung kabisihan niya. Para sa inyo, anong interpretation niya sa ganun post? Okay, so kanya-kanya tayo ng pabibo, haggard, okay. Um, totoo naman talaga. Share ko lang, okay. Productive me, okay. So iba-iba tayo ng opinion. Pero sabi nga dito, pwedeng humble bragging. Pwedeng bragging. or self promotion. So halos lahat naman sila uh, pare-pareho no kasi technically parang masaya ka kaya sine share mo ang iyong happiness pero it's a way for you to say na I'm better than you kung meron kang pinapatamaan do sa post mo, di ba? So depende 'yon no. Kaya pero lahat ng 'yan, lahat ng pinopost natin may affect 'yan sa ating branding. Kaya nga sa John Maxwell team, uh, meron kaming event recently, yung Live to Lead. No? Sabi nga ni John Maxwell, marami nagtatanong sa kanya tungkol sa branding. At sinasabi niya lang daw sa tao, quit branding. Uh, won't, won't you just quit branding? Just focus on being good. Kasi if you're good, any brand will work. And if you're not good, no brand will save you. No? Yung nasabi ni John Maxwell. At sabi rin nga ni Steve Harvey, Kapag alam mong tama yung ginagawa mo at tama at at may sense yung ginagawa mo at alam mo nakakatulong ka, hindi mo kailangan ng validation ng ibang tao, di ba? Kasi bisa na, na kaya tayo nagpo-post kasi gusto natin na i-like yung post natin, gusto natin purihin tayo ng ibang tao, di ba? Bisa may ganun din tayo para naghahanap tayo ng validation lalo na kung hindi tayo gaano nakakakuha ng validation from the from the people around us, no? Uh, so minsan depende rin kung ano yung ating nararamdaman no kaya kaya lahat ng ito yun na nga papasok din yung ano yung interpretation ng tao dun sa napo-post natin at para saan ba yung pinopost natin kaya minsan we put a lot of emphasis on success recognition yung mga recognition kasi nakikita natin yung para siyang success pero in reality when you take the step that's already a success no yung like take ng step and you do well in every step and you persist in doing that step success na siya yung nakikita lang na finish line halimbawa kung makatanggap makatanggap ka ng certificate bisa kino congratulate ka for the certificate pero hindi naman talaga siya yun eh ang ang success yung first step kung ano yung nun, the moment na mag-enroll ka at nag-decide ka na gagawin ko to yun yun ano na yun that's the first step no kaya every step is a success hindi yung final step yung recognition na kino congratulate ng mga tao online all right so are we good are we good Are we good so far? Kung kayo ay okay, can you type three in the chat box just to show na okay pa kayo? <laughs> Thank you very much. Sige, sige. Um, kayo ba ay nag-humble bragging? No? Para ganyan yung mga tanong-tanong dyan. Eh. Okay, next. So lahat ng yan, yung mm, pinopost natin online, yung mga paano natin pinoproject yung ating sarili, this all forms part ng tiyatawag nating digital footprint. all the information online about a person either posted by that person or others intentionally or unintentionally. So lahat ng sinasabi mo tungkol sa sarili mo, lahat ng sinasabi ng tao tungkol sa'yo. So pag kinagsama-sama yan, yan ang tiyatawag nating uh, digital footprint. Kaya kung video blogger ka, yung mga comments ng tao sa'yo, kasama rin yon sa digital footprint mo. Kaya ang reminder sa atin, kung gusto mo maging maganda ang iyong digital footprint, kung meron tayong footprints in the sun, meron din tayong digital footprint, pag-isipan natin, ano ba talaga yung gusto natin maging focus? No? Um, kung nakikita natin na yung social media, o oh, yung online is a curated self rather than your real self. Para doon sa mga sa inyo na naniniwala na curated yan, hindi naman lahat ng buhay ko niya lagay ko dyan. Yung curated parts lang. Then, 
mag-decide kayo. Ano ba talaga yung ipofocus nyo? Ano ba yung gusto nyo ilagay dyan na magiging part ng inyong curated self? Kung gagamitin mo siya for connection, bakit ka nagiging nakikipag-connect? Mas maging intentional ka when connecting with people. Um, sa Book Yourself Solid, uh, meron akong sinasuggest na tatlong klase ng connection. Ang first connection ay yung network of 90. 90. Can you type 90 sa chat box para lang maano ko lang na nanote niyo yung 90. So ano yung network of 90? Ito yung mga 90 na katao na you want, to, you want to keep in touch on a monthly basis. So pwede yung mga kasamahan mo siya sa trabaho, kasama mo siya sa organization, mga partners, mga collaborators, mga boss, no? uh, mga supporters, yung talaga meron kang relationship. Okay? Next, yung tinatawag natin outreach 20. Pakitype naman 20. Okay? So yung 20, ito naman yung mga tao na gusto nating maka-outreach. Yung outreach, ito yung mga taong we want to work with. Maybe we have not done any work with them. Or maybe kilala natin sila pero we were not able to pursue and complete a project with them or pursue a project with them. Sila rin, din, sila rin yung gusto natin makausap. So meron tayong network of 90 at meron din tayong outreach of 20. At yung pangatlo, uh, referral to 5. 5. No? So yung mga gusto natin bigyan ng referral, 5. Parang five people na gusto mong tulungan. So halimbawa, may kakilala kang graphic designer, may nakita kang opportunity, sige, re-referang kita. Uh, meron ka nakikita na, o oh, ito, nangangailangan ng insurance, pero kang gustong tulungan ng insurance agent, tutulungan mo siya. So five people na you want to help, na gusto mong magbigay ng referral sa kanya. Para kahit pa paano, mas, mas magiging interesting yung, yung footprint, no? the people that you, that you want to work with, that you want to communicate with, and build relationship with. So ulitin ko, network of 90, outreach to 20, at ang inyong referral 5. And last, of course, yung ating campaigns. No? Ano ba yung mga programa na gusto nating i-promote online sa SK? Pagplanuhan natin siya. Kailangan mag-align dyan yung focus natin, mag-align dyan yung sino yung mga gusto nating konektahan, at doon natin ipapasok yung ating campaign. Ang balita ko tong project na to, meron din tong campaign na component, no? So, kung magpa-participate kayo doon, then pwedeng yung gamitin tong idea na to na magkaroon tayo ng focus at isipin talaga natin yung mga taong gusto nating makakonek with para mag-benefit noon sa ating ilaran na campaign. Okay? Sige, tuloy na tayo. Um, ang isa rin sa mga nakikita nating concerns ngayon, yung tiyatawag nating hate speech, no? Uh, di ba, marami tayong mga nakitang balita recently tungkol dun sa red tagging. Of course, there are two sides of the equation, sabi ng government. Uh, ginagawa yan dahil talaga merong mga serious threats, pero meron din mga tao naman na tingin nila dahil na-accuse sila wrongly. And in the process, may mga taong na-accuse na hindi pa nabibigyan ng due process, na natatreten na kagad yung buhay nila, no? At uh, according din sa AsianCenter.org, merong apat na klaseng hate speech. Merong mga tao na dinidiscriminate based sa kanilang race. No? Sa atin, di ba, misa niyolo ko natin. At taga ganun yan, kaya ganyan yan. May mga tao tayo mga hinuhusgahan. No? Ah, kaya ganyan yan kasi ganun ang religion niya. Ah, ganun yan kasi ito ang kulay ng politiko niya. Politika niya. Ito ang color niya, kaya ganyan yan. Ah, ganyan yan kasi masyado siyang sipsik doon. No? O kaya sasabihin natin, uh, ano yan, uh, kaya sa ibang bansa, di ba, na didiscriminate yung mga workers doon, no? yung mga migrant workers, mga refugees, mga foreign nationals, kasi nakikipag-compete sila for work at nakikipag-compete din sila for resources. O nakikipag-agawan din daw sila for resources. At meron din tayo mga nakikita mga minorities, no? yung mga uh, iba ang kanilang gender preference o, o, o kaya... Depende kung ano ang interpretation natin pagdating sa definition sa words na yan. So marami tayo mga nakikita ng hate speech. So kayo ba nakakita na rin kayo ng hate speech at ano yung mga examples ng hate speech na naaalala niyo? Yung nag-stand out sa inyo. Meron ba kayong mga na-encounter na? Nakarinig na ba kayo no? Ah kasi taga ganito taga ganito taga ganitong lugar yan. Kaya ganyan ang ugali niyan, no? On, nakakita na ba kayo ng mga gano'n? Yung parang mga discrimination, di ba? 
So, yung mga discrimination na yon, pwedeng one way or another, para nagiging hate speech ang tingin sa kanya. No? Kaya ang tanong doon, kung tayo, nakakakita tayo ng hate speech online, araw-araw, kahit saan tayo tumingin, may nakikita tayo, ano ang magiging behavior natin kapag nakakakita tayo ng hate speech online? Makikitawa na lang ba tayo? Makikilike ba tayo? Makikiopinion na lang ba tayo para sabihin na, sige na, para wag lang ako awayin, no? makikiusyoso na ako dyan sa topic na yan? Or are you going to take a stand against uh, hate speech? Uh, although yun nga lang, sasabihin mo naman, pag nag-take ako ng stand, baka awayin lang ako ng mga yan, kaya tatahimik na lang ako. So kasama yan sa mga dilema na minsan uh, pinagdadaanan natin pagdating sa usapin na to online. No? Kaya pag sinabi natin hate speech, uh, tawag sa kanya, ang ibig sabihin niya ay verbal attack, targeting someone because of a group they belong to, yan, race, gender, religion, ability, or sexual orientation. And as a result, pwede mag-result din siya dun sa tinatawag na xenophobia, no? the fear or distrust of someone or something that is foreign or unknown. Parang uh, may ano kagad tayo, nagpo-form kagad tayo ng opinion sa isang bagay na parang hindi, kahit na hindi pa rin talaga natin naiintindihan o o na-understand, pero dahil kakaiba siya, parang ina-isolate kagad din natin siya, no? o di-discriminate din natin agad siya. Kaya may mga suggestions no? na pwede tayong mag-counter speech, no? um, messages that challenge or debunk extremism or stereotypes, at para mapaglaban natin ang ating freedom of speech, no? yung right natin na makapag-state ng opinion at ideas na hindi tayo pinipigilan o hindi tayo paparusahan sa pagpapahayag ng ating mga naiisip. So, ang tanong doon, kapag may nakita ba tayong information online at alam nating mali or parang kailangan i-elaborate para mas maintindihan ng tao, Ahayaan na lang ba natin yun or magka-counter speech tayo para makorek natin yung mga nakikita nating information. As leaders, lalong-lalo na, alam niyo naman, darating na yung eleksyon, tapos gaya niya, lumadabas na ngayon yung vaccine, no? yung COVID-19. Ngayon, maraming agam-agam ang mga tao. May mga taong ayaw mo pa-vaccine kasi natatakot sila. So, ang daming fake news, ang daming misinformation, ang daming xenophobia, no? parang nag-aano kagad tayo, nagko-conclude kagad tayo, tinatakot natin yung ating mga sarili, at kung ano-ano pa. So kailangan, parang lahat tayo, kung alam natin, kung may access tayo sa information, at alam natin yung totoo, kung privilege kayo na alam niyo yung totoo, sana gamitin natin, mag-counter speech tayo, para ma-edge, natin ma-educate ang tao. No? Lalo-lalo na sa mga SK leaders natin, dahil meron tayong access to information. At ganun din, no? um, connected yan. Eh. Yung pagkaroon ng hate speech, sino man yung nagsasalita, whether for or against siya, maaring maging victim din siya ng cyberbullying. Uh, recently sa Japan, naging, naging malaking balita yung uh, suicide ni Hana Kimura dahil na cyberbully siya. No? Parang kasama siya sa isang reality show. Sa stress niya, parang meron siyang inaway na male staff, kapos marami umaway sa kanya. To the point na merong mga troll o mga certain individuals na para bang ang pinopost lang sa kanya eh, kaila ka ba, ano, ano bang tingin mo, may value ka ba ba sa buhay na to? Kaila ka ba mamatay? Kaila ka ba mawawala? Wala ka namang kwente eh. Parang ganun ang message na nakukuha niya araw-araw. No? Ang dami nag-PPM sa kanya ng ganun. To the point na nag-suicide siya talaga. No? And ang ginawa ng Japanese government, dahil doon sa nangyari kay Hana Kimura, inanalyze nila yung mga messages nila, yung mga message na nagpo-post ng hate messages sa kanya, natuntun nila yung tao na may pinakamaraming hate message at talagang, talagang inaano talaga siya. At yung person na yun, nag-write na ng apology, lahat-lahat, pero still, no, kailangan niya pa rin ma-prosecute. Dahil kahit na nagsisimpatize lang siya dun sa male staff na parang nakagalitan niya. No? Kaya hindi porket nakikisimpatize ka on something, may right ka na na mang-away na mang-away na mang-away na ibang tao. No? Uh, hindi, hindi tayo parang ano yun? ano tam tam gangster hindi naman tayo mga tam gangster o mga facebook gangster na oh may nakita tayo na mga away na lang tayo ng mga away at iisipin kagad natin eh tama naman ako eh mga away kan ma hindi hindi porket right right yung opinion mo tingin mo right yung opinion mo ibig sabihin right na rin na mga away tayo sa iba no so yan yung mga dapat nating 
uh, inote of. At marami tayong makikita ng younger generation na maaaring iba rin ang appreciation sa ganitong topic. Kaya malaki ang role ng mga SK leaders natin. At yung cyberbullying, no, napakalawak na niya. No? So, it uses, nangyayari to to digital devices, sites, and apps to intimidate, harm, and upset anyone. And as a result, nagkakaroon din tayo tuloy ng no, tinatawag na disinhibition effect. No? Yan yung nagbibihate tayo differently online than we would in real life. Halimbawa, in real life, hindi ka naman talaga sasali dyan. Pero pagdating sa online, matapang ka makikisali. Hindi ka nga umaaten ng rally eh. Pero pagdating sa online, grabe kang makipag-away. No? Uh, so, yung, yung tanong ni Tina, kung pagkakaiba ba ang cyberbullying o cyber harassment, parang may similarity sila. No? May similarity sila. Pero yung harassment kasi, pwedeng pwedeng ano siguro yon talaga may threat and may threat ka nang binibigay to a person no o may threat ka nang binibigay no talaga mas ano siya mas direct mas direct na siya no okay sige kaya paano kung magkaroon ka ng tiyatawag na digital dilemma no ano ba yung digital dilemma halimbawa Uh, kanina may binanggit akong kwento yung tungkol kay Dax, no? Dax, nandiyan ka pa ba? Hello, Dax. Hello, Dax, kung nandiyan ka pa, say hello. <laughs> yung kanina binanggit kong uh, example kay Dax, no? Yung kunwari may nag-love letter sa kanya at, uh, at uh, nat natuwa siya doon sa love letter. Ang ginawa niya, pinost niya sa Facebook at yung nagpadala ng love letter, nakilala ng ibang tao at eto na, Inaano na siya, kinakantsawa na siya, hinu-humor na siya online, no? Eh nagkataon hindi type ni Dax, no? Eh talagang lalong hinu-humor tong person na to online. Kaya lang, syempre si Dax naging uncomfortable siya. Kasi nung pinost niya yun, wala naman siya masamang intensyon dahil di naman niya alam kung sino yung nag nagpadala nung letter, eh. Pinost niya lang online kasi, ay, ang cute naman, meron akong ano, secret admirer, oh, secret crush, okay? Pero it can also put you in a digital dilemma, di ba? Kasi di mo alam kung anong gagawin mo. Di mo naman alam na siya pala yung tao, wala ka namang intention, ayaw mo, wala ka namang intention na pwedeng, ma, di mo naman inakala may mabubuli. So magkakaroon tayo ng digital dilemma, no? Na wala naman may kagustuhan na mapunta sa ganong klaseng situation, no? What, what should we do? Ano yung dapat natin gawin? And I think, sa mga nakikita natin mga, alam niyo ba, karamihan ng cybercrime cases sa Philippines, po, karamihan dyan libel, karamihan ng mga cases sa Philippines, cybercrime, puro libel, yung mga hindi pagkakaintindihan. No? And, and, and because of that, it puts parties in digital dilemma. At marami dyan, mga innocent, dahil bigla na lang silang, sabi nga ni Andrea, no? na call out na lang sila. So because na call out sila in a sense parang inexpose natin yung person na yon para ma cyberbully sila. A ako naka-experience naka ako ng ganyan eh yung nako call out ako nung yung mga earlier years ko sa blogging. Nagsalita ako sa isang event, nagbigay ako ng opinion ko. Tapos meron nakapanood nung talk ko sa event, na kwento niya sa ibang tao. Yung napagkwentuhan niya, nag-post na para may mini misrepresent daw ako. Hindi naman niya ako dinain kagad. Kaso sa dami na nagko-comment sa kanya at kung sino-sino na yung mga binabanggit na sino niyang pinaparinggan, napilitan siyang inaim ako. So by the time na inaim niya ako, lalo, lalo siyang inaway ng tao kasi para bang, ano yan, dahil hindi ka yung kinuha, kaya ganoon, ano ng mga sinabi ng tao. Kaya, kaya misan, be careful tayo sa pagsasalita natin, no? yung mga parinig natin kasi it might also put us in a digital dilemma. So, kaya kailangan i-weigh in natin yung ating mga feelings, no? Uh, sorry, hindi ko nabanggit yung link ng commonsense.org dito, no? Pero ito yung pointers ng commonsense.org. So, kapag halimbawa may mga nakikita tayong situation, tignan natin, sino ba yung mga tao involved? Ano ba yung dilemang face nila? Number two, Um, ano kaya yung nararamdaman nila dahil sa dilemma na to at bakit challenging itong situation na to? Paano ba natin i-handle itong situation na to para magkaroon ng positive na outcome? At kung ano yung gagawin natin, ano naman yung sasabihin ng mga taong import? Parang ano lang yan eh, away. Naranasan nyo na ba yun? Yung may nag-away na dalawang bagets. Dahil nag-away yung dalawang bagets, sumali yung magulang sa away. 
pagtagal-tagal, yung magulang na nung dalawang bagets, ang ah, nag-aaway na. At dahil nag-aaway na yung dalawang magulang, nagkademandahan na. Pero kung tutusin, yung away, away bagets nang yan. Lumaki yung away dahil sa mga magulang. No? So parang ganun din siya. No? Pwede lumaki siya ng, because of other parties participating. Parang halimbawa, let's say, friend ko si Andrea. Si Andrea, may friend siya nakaaway online. Eh, feeling tita ako kay Andrea. So yung kaaway niya, talagang inaway-away ko. No? So, yung kausap ngayon ni Andrea na parang supposedly hindi naman ganun ka-combative, pero dahil ako, super combative ako, naging combative din yung kaaway ni Andrea at may kumampirin kay Andrea na matapang din. Lumaki tuloy yung away. No? Kaya minsan tayo, na maaring bystander tayo in an issue, iwas, ingatan natin na tayo pa yung magpapalaki ng away. Hindi tayo, we should not be fire makers. No? Water tayo dapat. Water. We should not bring fire to the situation. We should bring water to the situation. So type mo natin, water. <laughs> Kailangan tayo ay maging water ha? sa mga situation. No? Huwag tayong maging ano, fire na talagang tayo pa yung magpapalaki ng away. No? Tapat tayo yung magbibigay ng solution sa mga away at hindi magpapalaki ng away. <laughs> okay. Tama yan, Jeff. Water! Diba? Tama. tama yan, tama yan. Okay. Sige. Um... Ngayon, pag-usapan naman natin yung last part ng aking talk, yung ating digital, digital rights and responsibilities. Ang Foundation for Media Alternatives noong 2015 in collaboration with several organizations and in fact, na-publish din ito sa DICT, may pinirmahan na document doon, yung Philippine Declaration of Internet Rights and Responsibilities. At, at i-wrap up natin ang aking talk para pag-usapan natin ang ating mga internet rights and responsibilities. At ang, ang unang-una dyan ay yung internet access for all. Yung lahat tayo mga Pilipino magkaroon ng access sa internet. Pangalawa, i-democratize ang architecture ng internet. Kasi uh, maganda sana kung ito ay based sa tiyatawag nating open standards no? at siguraduhin natin na makakapag-interconnect tayo no? sa mga iba't ibang tao sa iba't ibang mundo sa pag-embrace ng open standards na yon, no? At uh, pangatlo, yung tiyatawag nating freedom of expression and association. No? Lahat tayo, uh, magamat hindi maaari tayo nag-agree sa isa't isa, pero karapatan natin na magpa, magpahiwatig at magparamdam at uh, ibahagi no? yung ating naramdaman, naiisip no? at opinion sa mga bagay-bagay nang hindi tayo lalaitin sa ating mga opinion. No? Yung, kahit pa paano, tanggapin natin na meron tayong kanya-kanyang point of view at maaari naman tayong i-enlighten, pagpalinawagan, pero hindi ibig sabihin nun i-judge kagad na mali yung opinion natin. Number four, yung right to privacy and protection ng personal data at nasight ko yung importance ito kanina. Gender equality, no yung pag-recognize na wala, wala tayo dapat na, na binaba, di dapat bias ang pag-connect sa internet. No? Um, lahat ay may equal right to learn, magkaroon ng access uh, at siguro makibahagi sa pag-shape ng internet yung mga policies no? regardless of sex, sexual orientation, gender identity and expression at sinasabi rin natin yung openness and access to information, knowledge and culture na lahat tayo may right to access information on the internet and be free from restrictions on access to knowledge. Kaya nga di ba meron tayong freedom of information. No? May mga existing policies tayo ngayon para pwede tayong uh, manghingi ng information. Okay? Uh, at uh, ipaglaban natin yung right na yan. At kasama rin dyan yung tiyatawag nating socio-economic empowerment and innovation. Lahat tayo ay free to use the internet for socio-economic empowerment and innovation. At yung mga innovators sa inyo, uh, maganda rin sana na i-encourage to design, to develop, at uh, mag-implement ng mga sistema na mag-respect din ng human rights at magko-contribute sa socio-economic development at sustainable development. Nandyan din ang education and digital literacy. Lahat tayo uh, magkaroon ng access sa knowledge and skills 
para mas matutunan pa natin kung paano gamitin ang internet. Kaya nga natutuwa tayo na nandito tayo ngayon sa activity ng Media Civic Labs at Foundation for Media Alternatives, itong uh, Break the Fake no? o Media Civic Labs. At nandyan din yung liberty, safety, and security on the internet. Lahat tayo ay may right to liberty and security on the internet. Uh, yung rights natin regardless kay ano pang tingin nila sa atin right natin yung liberty at security na yon hindi tayo pwedeng uh, pagdamutan no nung right to liberty and security on the internet and internet and ICT for environmental sustainability yung yung baging magkaroon tayo ng sustainable use of the internet encourage natin ito at enable natin to at i-minimize din natin at i-recycle or otherwise dispose yung mga iba't ibang gadgets o technology in relation dito para hindi naman siya makasama sa environment. Parang yung mga devices nyo, di ba? Paano pag naluma na siya, ano, itatapo mo lang siya? Dapat may proper disposal ito. Dahil kung hindi, yung mga parts nito magiging harmful din sa ating environment. Okay, dyan sa shinare natin na uh, 1 to 10, ano ang pinaka-paborito nyo? Ano ang pinaka-importante sa inyo? Internet 1, anong piliin nyo? Anong pinaka-importante sa inyo? Internet access for all, democratizing the architecture of the internet, freedom of expression and association, right to personal privacy and protection of personal data, gender equality. No? Ano ang pinaka-importante sa inyo? Ayan. So, ayan. Oh, all of the above. Okay. Sige. So, So sana uh, marami kayo na, na inside na nag-gain sa usapan natin today at I'm so hopeful sa mga SK leaders natin. Nainiwala ako na napakalaki ng role nyo sa pag-shape ng inyong generation at generation to come sa tamang paggamit ng internet, ng social media para mas marami pang ma-empower na Pilipino lalong lalo na ngayon na dinadala ang internet sa lahat. no uh, Internet para sa lahat. Pag may wifi, may hanap buhay, no? At uh, pag may wifi, may trabaho, no? Kaya may internet, may trabaho. Kaya lahat ng 'yan, malaki ang magiging impact sa buhay natin. Pero nakikita rin natin yung abuse, di ba? Meron tayo mga child abuse, cyber prostitution na nakikita, no? Na-abuse din yung mga technology. Kaya tayo, sana yung mga SK leaders maging bukas din ng ating mga mata at huwag natin hayaan na magamit itong technology na to para ma-oppress din lalo na doon na yung mga helpless no yung mga bata na hindi dapat mabiktima sa paggamit ng internet. All right? So maraming salamat uh Media Civic Love sa inyong uh, sa opportunity na to at kung kayo ay may katanungan, uh, pwede po kayong mag-PM po sa akin at pwede po ako magbigay ng free consultation session sa inyo. Ito po ito po ang aking Facebook, mag-add-add po tayo. Maraming salamat. Doc, salamat ha. Thank you at sport ka. Thank you, thank you. Hello, thank you Ma'am Janet for that insightful insightful talk. Um, I'd love to open the floor for uh, the few questions for for the participants who've been itching to raise questions to Ma'am Janet. I've seen some of your chat over the discussion. I think we already have one question that I, one one question we have from one of our partner organizations. So we can start with that and then for all the other participants, please drop your questions using the chat option okay ma'am janet the first question we have here from ma'am tina uh, from atetina of fma may pagkakaiba po ba ang cyberbullying sa cyber harassment actually parang ano siya eh um feeling ko nga para siyang one and the same no uh, parang ganun ang dating niya kasi at the end of the day uh, parang hindi naman siya masasabing depende kasi kung masasabi bang credible threat siya di ba kasi parang pag sinabi natin kasi parang tinotorment mo yung victim o parang tineterrorize mo yung victim eh. Kasi pag bullying parang pwedeng kasama ka lang sa group siguro. Pero pag sinabi kasi nating harassment medyo iba na siya. Talagang you're really tormenting the person. So siguro talagang nag-PPM ka na. Talagang inaano mo na siya. Um, inaaway mo na talaga siya. Talaga directly, no, individually. And parang pag sinabi kasi nating um, cyber harassment, uh, syempre lahat naman yan, cyber bullying, cyber, cyber stalking, cyber harassment, wala siyang consent, no? Pero yan na nga, pag sinabi nating cyber harassment, yan na, yung talagang 
personal na talaga yung pangaharas mo to the person. No? Talaga nagpapadala ka na ng email, nagtitret ka na talaga, o kaya tinotorment mo siya. No? Ganon ang tingin natin sa cyber harassment. Okay. Um, thank you, Ma'am Janet, for the insights. No? Um, we have one more question here from Shannon. Is this the right time for the Philippines to be open for e-governance? Uh, definitely, um, Philippines naman talaga open na to e-governance for quite some time now, especially nung mapasa ang e-commerce law or Republic Act 8792 uh, noong year 2000 at nagsimula na mag-adopt ng mga e-government programs ang ating gobyerno. Kaya nga, di ba, pwede ka na mag-apply ng NDI mo online, uh, passport mo online, um, pwede ka nang mag-request ng birth certificates mo online. So mara, unti-unti na natin nakikita yung mga iba't ibang services na ginagawa ng available online na pakikipag-transact sa government. No? At, uh, and I hope mas bibilis pa siya, lalo na kapag nagkaroon na tayo ng national ID na kung saan mas ma-verify na talaga yung identity ng bawat Pilipino nakikipag-transact sa government. Okay. Uh, Ma'am Janet, we have one question from Andrea. What can you say about the practice of exposing people? Is that a form of cyberbullying, even if the intention is good? Like, is it convenient for people to know about who to prevent? Um, ganyan, sabi niya. Okay. I don't know the context um, of this. But yeah. Alam niyo, yung exposure, tingnan niyo muna kung yung ine-expose yung tao, magbabiolate kayo ng data privacy niya. So, halimbawa, Si Gab, let's say, meron, kaming, meron ako nakita ang ginagawa niya na hindi ko nagustuhan, tapos nag-post ako about it at in-expose ko si Gab. Pero let's say, kung yung in-expose kong information ay papasok sa tinatawag na sensitive personal information, tapos itong si Gab naman, hindi naman siya politiko na magiging subject siya to public, public scrutiny, hindi naman siya public official, then pwede niya akong balikan on two items. Pwede niya akong balikan for libel or slander at pwede niya rin akong balikan for violation ng kanyang data privacy. At kung sino yung nagbigay ng information na yun sa akin, pwede niya rin, uh, contact, pwede niya rin i-ano yung taong yun dahil nag-disclose siya ng information ng walang consent ni Gab. Okay. I hope that answers the question. Um, we have one question from a Break the Fake member. Should the government strengthen its cybersecurity efforts, especially in the implementation of the national ID system and vaccine rollout? And if you have ideas on what could these efforts be, please also share, Ma'am Janet. Uh, definitely, we na welcome natin yung idea ng national ID at uh, at pag verify at syempre, para ma roll out ang national ID, may mga components yan, no? Nandyan yung digital signature para ma-verify yung identity ng isang person. Pag sinabing digital signature, hindi siya yung electronic na kopya ng pirma. Hindi yun ang ibig sabihin natin ng digital signature. May mga tiyatawag tayong uh, public key infrastructure, cryptography, para ma-secure -ma yung mga information natin no, at yung identity natin. Kasama yan usually kapag nag implement ng national ID. At kung magkakaroon tayo ng national ID, at kung nagtitiwala tayo sa mga institution sa mag-roll out ito, kailangan magkaroon tayo ng fake uh, magagamit talaga yan para siguraduhin na yung benefits mo para sa'yo o kaya may mga, may mga kailangan kang i-follow up yung mga records mo. Hindi yung ang dami-dami mong kinokontak, ang dami-dami mong isasubmit na information para mapatunayan mo lang na ikaw yung nangihingi ng information. So hopefully mas, mas streamline, mas, mas, mas mawawala yung red tape, yung tagal na para makakuha ka ng data kasi nakakabit yung data mo dun sa iyong national ID. Okay. Um, one question from Rojin sa Taho. What can we uh, what can we do if we encounter toxic individuals online? Um, for example, extremists. Oo. Um, of course, hindi naman natin sila lahat ma mapi-please online, no? Kaya kapag ganimbawang, kung talagang hindi tayo makakapag-agree to disagree, then at kung talagang magiging toxic yung relationship, de, pwede na muna natin sila sigurong i-unfollow, no? Para wag naman tayo ganong ma-stress, no? Unless talaga mission mo talaga na baguhin ang pag-iisip niya. Pero normally kasi kapag ang isang tao talaga naging sarado na yung kanyang opinion, mahirap nang madalas baguhin ito. Pero kung merong mga activities na magkakaroon kayo ng opportunity to talk, 
magkaroon ng na makakapag-facilitate ng mutual understanding. Uh, bakit hindi, no? Kasi pwede naman magkaroon ng mga programa na parang yung mga parang sa team building, di ba? Minsan may mga nagkakaroon tayo ng mga activities where we get to understand one another even if we don't agree in our even ibang ideology natin, even iba yung beliefs natin, pero hindi ibig sabihin na iba ang beliefs natin, kailangan natin bastusin ang isa't isa. Pwedeng tanggapin na lang natin yung pagkakaiba ng opinion at uh, sabi nga nila where you are ang isang requirement sa isang leader ngayon, yung tiyatawag natin anticipatory leadership, no? Where where you are most confident, where you are most certain, where you are most adamant, you may be wrong. Where you are where you are most competent, where you are most adamant, where you may be the least competent. Kasi sarado yung isip mo eh. So if we instead of spending time defending, we should spend time asking questions. So ganun din, kung meron tayo mga nami-meet na masyadong sarado ang opinion, don't explain yourself. Just ask questions. Ask questions. Ask questions. With the intention of understanding. And, and who knows, you might understand even more. But may hindihan natin kung saan sila nang gagaling. Okay, thanks ma'am. Um, I, so, I was supposed to actually ask someone to unmute themselves, pero... Um, just to hear something no, from our participant and to increase the interaction. Pero according to our tech specialist, hindi siya pwede ng ngayon. Um, question from JD. Because he, what if he wanted to file a case against someone and inform the public uh, to give them awareness that this person is not a doctor, it's a quack doctor. Is it okay for, for him to expose this person? Or can, he, can this person actually file a case in return against him? Mag-file lang siya ng complaint sa PRC, mag-file siya ng complaint sa DOH, mag-file siya ng complaint sa Medical Association. There are proper channels. Social media is not the default channel. Meron proper channels. Kasi the moment na hindi ka nag-follow ng proper channels, ang, inten ang magiging dating mo na libelous ka na kasi ang intention mo is to destroy. Pero kung gusto mo lang mag-raise ng alarm, mag, mag, ano, ng intense, mag ano, then mag-file ka ng proper complaint. Tapos kung nasa social media siya, i-report mo na lang siya sa Facebook na dubious yung kanyang identity. Okay. Um, let's jump to the last two questions, okay? Um, we have one question from Esther, but pwede na daw mag-unmute mag si Esther. Esther, can you unmute yourself and ask Ma'am Janet directly? Hello po, good afternoon po. Good afternoon, we can hear you. Ah, uh, ma'am, meron po yung paano po yung ano po, yung meron po kasi yung one time nakita ko po sa Facebook ganun. Tapos hindi po minsan natin hindi namin natin naiiwasan yung uh, word tayo na nasasabi sa ibang tao na hindi natin alam na nakakababa pala sa kanila or hindi natin alam na emotionally is nakakasakit na pala ganun. Paano po yun? Um, kahit yung parang expression mo lang siya, pero part, pa, part ba yun ng cyberbullying po? Uh, yung cyberbullying kasi subjective kasi siya eh. No? Um, pero kung ang halimbawa, kung marami yung nagsasalita sa kanya, kasi pag sinay mo cyberbullying, pwede hindi lang naman ibang ta isang tao eh. Madalas marami eh. Pagkaya nga nagiging bullying case siya kasi parang pinagtutulong-tulungan siya. So kung halimbawa ang kasama ka ron, uh, ngayon para sa, sa tingin mo hindi naman cyberbullying yung ginagawa mo pero na-accuse ka, di i-defend mo na lang siya in court. Sasabihin mo na hindi cyberbullying yung ginagawa mo, nag express ka lang ng opinion mo. Uh, pero kung uh, pero kung iba yung appreciation nung sinabi mo, unfortunately courts ang mas makakapagsabi noon kung ano yung appreciation nung sinabi mo, no? Um madali kasing sabihin na Parang ano lang yan eh. Uh, parang para sabihin, maganda ka. Maganda ka. O di ba? Parang tone, parang tone kasi yan eh, no? So depende yan sa tone. I can say a straight word, maganda ka. Pero depending on the tone, I might sound insulting, I might sound um demeaning, no? So pwedeng magkaroon siya ng iba't ibang meaning. And at ang problem, pag tinipe mo lang siya sa comments, 
pwedeng iba-ibang, depende ngayon dun sa nagbabasa, ano yung tone na inimpart niya dun sa sinabi mo. Kaya, kaya madalas kung cyberbullying siya, marami nagsasalita. Kaya kung ano yung mga ano ron, merong ina-assume na certain tone. And this talaga explicit na you're not there to put down the person, you're there to pacify the situation. Kaya water, 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 water. <laughs> yung reminder ko, what fire. <laughs> Okay, uh, that's a great reminder from Madam Janet. I hope that answers the question, Esther. No, um, we have one more question. This is pertaining to Facebook, and it's so great because one of our presenting partner organizations later will be Facebook. So you will actually ask. You can actually ask Facebook Philippines later, um, directly. Pero um, so this is the last question to Madam Janet. The question is: Should we be alarmed that we provide our personal information on Facebook? and being used as platform for black propaganda. Um, kaya si Facebook ngayon, di ba, meron na tinatawag na Facebook Supreme Court. <laughs> Nagkaroon sila ng call on that eh, na parang ang mangyayari, nag-call nag sila for users. Actually, kahit ako, nag-apply ako doon. No? Na, na parang, although term lang yung Supreme Court, parang gumawa sila ng parang board of, parang mga users, mga, mga users sa Facebook, parang iba't iba segments of society. O, o yan, oversight board, tama yung sabi ni Michael. Para mag, ano, do sa mga iba't ibang issue, marami nag-apply dyan, kahit ako nag-apply ako dyan. Hindi ko alam kung sino yung pumasok sa oversight board from the Philippines eh. Pero ang intention doon, para, para kahit pa paano, yan, meron tayong, meron, meron tayong user representation na pwede may mga users tayo na magpaprotect din ng interest natin. Uh, ngayon, yung paggamit sa black propaganda, I think, we have to recognize na yung mga platforms, hindi naman nila talaga inakala na gagamitin sila dyan, di ba? Wala na nga lang si Friendster ngayon eh. Pero kung nandiyan si Friendster, I'm sure hindi iisipin ni Friendster na gagamitin siya for uh, black propaganda. Kaya nga marami tayong mga mas nakikitang measures ngayon, di ba? Yung mga paghigpit no? sa paggamit ng social media, sa pag-verify ng identity among others. Kasi nga, Uh, nalaman na maari siyang i-abuse kapos ngayon pwede tayo mag-report ng mga post no? kung nakikita natin na parang nakakaharas siya pwede natin i-report yung mga post at kapag nag-share ka ng information kapag nakita na fake information siya or misinformation ina-alert ka na ni Facebook na yung post mo ay misinformation at lahat ng warnings na yan tandaan nyo kapag kayo ay nag-share ng false information nakaka-affect din siya sa inyong pogi points <laughs> kawagin ko na lang siya pogi points ha? pogi points sa Facebook so as a result pwede maapektuhan din ang visibility ng iyong mga post kaya nga di ba misa na pe-penalize tayo kapag meron tayo mga na-abuse na features na pe-penalize tayo mga wala lang yung black sa atin kapag lumagpas na yung certain period kasi Uh, yun na nga, yun yung mga measures niya. Imbis na i-terminate yung account mo, medyo may konting slap on the wrist no? para wag mo ma-abuse yung platform. Hey, thank you so much, Ma'am Janet. And just to also reiterate what Ma'am Janet said, no? um, actually, there are a lot of new Facebook options. As a matter of fact, you can already report fake news in Facebook already. That's a new tool and I think Facebook later on will actually discuss more about that. So for, for from now on, moving forward, expect to hear the term digital citizenship from our series of webinars. And in this juncture, you might want to ask, what is it all about, right? Kasi kanina pa yung, ano, yung session ni Ma'am Janet, digital citizenship. Ano nga ba exactly yung digital citizenship? Well, to know more about that, we have friends from Facebook Philippines who will actually give us an introduction about Facebook. Our partnership with Facebook has been long-standing since 2019 when we were actually developing or working on Digital Tayo module. This module was actually launched in a Digital Tayo platform to be able to communicate better what di digital citizenship is all about. So in their platform, there are a lot of learning modules and sessions about um, critical thinking, about digital safety and wellness and well-being. So Medjo, if you're looking for resources on media literacy, you can actually use the Media Civics Lab platform according to the video that you've seen, but you can also use uh, Facebook's platform. So to talk about uh, dig digital citizenship, uh, let's all welcome Chard Amazona. So again, magandang magandang hapon to all of you guys who are actually here in, in this session and we are happy to share with you some of the things that 
we are um, talking here on Facebook as well as with Aha Behavioral Design. And we really wanted to make sure that this afternoon will be a fruitful one to all of you. So before we start our discussion for this afternoon, let me share my screen because this will be um, an interactive session for all of us. And we hope that um, you have this, this I don't know, energy to really um, share with your thoughts, especially with your ideas sa uh, chat box natin. So again, ayan, magandang magandang hapon to all of you. So again, um, before we start our program for this afternoon, our session for this afternoon, let me share with you this simple um, instruction lang. No? So before we start, meron tayo normally in Facebook um, digital tayo module. We always provide this what we call pre-test um, activity. And the goal of the pre-test activity is to at least lang ask some questions that will be vital in, in our discussion and will also help you out as we understand better kung ano ba yung context ng pag-uusapan natin in today's learning activity. So before we start, um, please do um, open your Facebook Messenger and then connect tayo with the digital tayo search bar. Hanapin nyo sa messenger nyo yung, ano, yung digital tayo na as you can see it on your screen. And then, of course, um, don't forget to answer the questions that will be uh, shown in the pretest. Alright? So again, please feel free to do so. I'll be giving you three minutes to answer the questions. So if you are guys ready, kindly um, put it in your chat box. Hashtag digital tayo. Para makita natin um, kung sino-sino na ba yung ready for the session. Ayan. Alright. So, let me see kung sino ba yung mga nag, ay, na hashtag digital tayo. If you guys are ready, okay, um, type lang tayo sa chat box natin, hashtag digital tayo. Alright. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Floyd. Thank you, Christine. Uh, Fitz, George, Cassandra. Alright. So, Nakikita ko na ready tayo lahat. So please feel free to do so. Open your Facebook Messenger. Then type digital tayo in the search bar. And don't forget to use our learn code. It's AHARA04. So please be uh, input niyan sa mismong session natin para makita natin and malaman natin um, ilan na ba yung sasama for our discussion for this afternoon. So yeah, I'll be giving you three minutes to accomplish this task. So your three minutes starts now. Now let us proceed. Okay. Proceed tayo with our starter lang, starter discussion lang natin. So, let's have um, activity, an activity. The activity nito, actually, the goal is to really um, hype every one of us who are actually um, watching and with us with this afternoon. So, simple lang naman yung, ano? simple lang naman yung instruction natin. Okay? The goal is that you have to comment digital tayo if you can relate to each situation. So, I'll be sharing with you some situations na kung saan ang, your goal is to really comment below Kung ano nga ba yung, kung kayo nga ba relate with some of the uh, things na i-share namin with you. Alright, so some of the discussions or some of the points that I'll be sharing with you ay based sa ating personal experience, kung naramdaman nyo na. So kung oo ang sagot ninyo, please feel free to write in our chat box, digital tayo. Alright, so start na tayo with our um, first situation. Alright. So first is, Ayan. If nakagawa na kayo ng Dalgona Coffee, if nakagawa na kayo ng Dalgona Coffee, it will be right. Digital tayo in the contact. Okay. If nakagawa na kayo ng Dalgona, buti pa kayo nakagawa na. Cassandra already done it. I've done it. I'd rather. Si Lady as well. Okay. Next. Next question tayo. I've been working for more than 10 years. So if, you're, uh, if you've been working more than 10 years, um, right tayo, digital tayo. Okay. Thank you, Shannon. Uy, talaga. Konti lang, ah. Okay, next. Next question tayo. If you are having difficulty using gadgets or application, please feel free to write digital tayo. Kung hindi naman, I know, majority of us here, or all of us here are here so, um, para mahirap atang panimulaan na we are having this for gadgets. Siguro, in some other applications, the sector that we move na to um, online learning and online interaction, I think, ito yung mga naging challenge, no? But so far, I guess, uh, hindi naman masyado. And now, down to our last question for this afternoon. Ayan. If you are ready to be a responsible digital citizen, please feel free to write Digital tayo in the comments. Let's do this, guys. Let's do this. 
Okay, so as we start our discussion or as we start our, as we start our, uh, syempre, no, discussion for this afternoon, we really wanted to make sure that okay tayo lahat, no? Um, so just a quick check naman, malino naman yung ayun natin, no? Malino naman yung audio natin or do you see, do you, do you hear me? Nairinig naman ako, if nairinig nyo ako, uh, gawa tayo ng ano, thumbs up, thumbs up tayo. Alright, thumbs up tayo sa uh, comment section. Just to check na nangirinig nyo ako for this session. Malino naman, clear tayo. Alright, thank you guys. Okay, so for this um session, we will be talking more about you and social media. Alright? All of us, or if not uh, majority of us, have been using social media a lot lately, diba? since the start of the pandemic. And we know a lot of you are thinking or even um, have this kind of question na kung saan, bakit nga ba ako mag-join sa isang social media platform? Some of you, the first course is that you wanted to share about yourself, right? Some of you would like to really be part of social media because you wanted to share experiences. Okay, ano man, dahil nga busy kayo or you're doing a lot of things um, with your work or with other gigs that you have, most of you would like to get updates or even connect with your family and friends. No? And some of the people based on uh, um, information that we received is that they wanted to join social media because they wanted to grow their own businesses. All right? And considering with your answers, no, the big question is what is a digital citizen? No? And kanina na, na mentioned na rin naman ni Gab na parang normal na pinag-uusapan na ngayon because of, again, because of the pandemic, because we are first forced to work actually within the comforts of our homes or even um, be somewhere else na, na, na safe, no? We are always being part of the whole digital community. And the question actually is answering, sino nga ba yung digital citizen, no? Just to share with you, a digital citizen is someone who has the knowledge and skills to responsibly use the internet and, of course, other digital technologies. All right? So, I know majority tayo or all lahat naman tayo nandito ay millennials and we understand the term already. Pero, the big question um, from answering the what, no? the challenge of answering the question of how to become a responsible digital citizen. So in this session, we will be talking about three important things. Something that a responsible digital uh, citizen protects. So una is ourself or oneself. Second is your family and friends. And third is actually a community. So punta muna tayo with oneself. Okay? And using our, uh, no, in, in being active in a digital community, okay, we always have to understand that digital footprint that na I mentioned in earlier or during with the uh, discussions for this day is that a digital footprint is something that we share online, a behavior that we do online, something that leaves a mark depending on how we manage information. And some of the information that we share about ourselves includes our personal and profile uh, information, some of our posts, kung hindi ito naka public, no? We share it to the posts natin in social media forms part of what we call digital footprint, messages, and even what we share or what we like. No? And syempre, ang question then also natin, sino nga ba yung mga tao who have access to that information? So this includes our online friends and relationships, including with the second uh, degree or third degree. No? And ano ba yung mga information or things or ways that we can share or people can access um, information about us? So some of you would have, if you're active in social media or if you have your own profiles and different platforms, you are actually sharing uh, images no? where people can actually check and see or even download at the very least. Others naman, we can share it through social media accounts. Also, in our school, diba? Uh, lalo na yung mga nag-aaral pa rin, we are actually sharing our information via our school uh, network. Also, if you tried um, applying for jobs, 
no? We are also sharing our information or other people can access your information through your previous employer. Siyempre, new stories, if you are active um, media-wise, if you've been uh, invited to a lot of activities, a lot of um, events, even online, no? you can also be um, seen through these uh, platforms. And siyempre, lastly, with our community or social groups. And being part of a digital community, the challenge now, as we venture more on using different platforms online, sharing our thoughts online, you know, even buying things online, the challenge or the bigger question is how we actually protect our digital identity. So there are actually three ways to protect your digital identity based on this module. Number one is we have to choose the content that you show. Okay. Second is be wary of abusive content. And third is always make sure that your account is secure. So how do we do that? Let's start with choosing the content that we show to other people. Okay, some tips that we would like to share is that kailangan when we share something, when we uh, put ourselves out there in the social media world or even the digital world, is that we have to be authentic. Okay, we don't use a fake profile or name, and importante that we know how to report. Okay, always remember that we are living already in a VUCA world, no? We are living already in a fourth, um, what about 21st century, wherein we have to know the basics. And that's actually no to uh, report things kapag uh, it violates the community standards. No? Or even make sure that we are actually sharing the real us. Okay? Tung totoong tayo. Because um, in some other uh, things, no, people would like to join social media because they wanted to build something that in reality. Always remember when we join, when you join or when we join social media, we have to be in our authentic self. Next is that we have to choose our friends wisely. So we have to know how to maximize the feature of unfriending, unfollowing, or even blocking. Okay? And syempre, another tip that I would like to share with you is always to choose your audience wisely. Be careful with what you share. Sabi nga, eh, one of the media agencies that we also follow is that click before you, uh, think before you click. No. And having said that, um, in Facebook, no, there is what we call a Facebook community standards. The goal of the Facebook community standards is to act as our code of conduct. So in schools, we call it as our student handbook. It's our manuals. So for the community, we call it the Facebook community standards. So the Facebook community standards is something that governs us within the platform. And these policies are actually inclusive of different views and beliefs. So those people of um, color can join Facebook uh, if you believe on something that is that it's actually contrary to the whole context of um, community standards. You can also form part or be part of the community. And syempre, the community standards also provides us that these policies do not you know, overlook uh, the marginalized sector as well. And as part of our discussion for this afternoon is the value of content thinking. How do we make sure na importante that we understand the value of our content? No? The value of our content is that kapag nag-violate tayo sa Facebook community standards, let's say we are sharing contents that um, is actually against the standard, your account may be removed. Okay? Kaya ingat-ingat din tayo when we share things no, uh, across social media, especially on Facebook. No? So paalala as always, make sure na before you post something, before you share something, before you um, cascade something using uh, social media platforms or even Facebook platform, make sure lang na magpa-follow siya sa community standards because that's our guide of our uh, decorum inside the platform. So, Having said that, let's proceed to the next uh, point of how we actually protect ourselves. Ito yung importante. Be wary of abusive content. Some of us would have an idea na kung saan hindi tayo aware or some of our colleagues doesn't even know na nasa scam na pala sila. Scam in such a way na, uy, biglang meron na silang na-receive na friend request or message request and then nag ask ng ating mobile number o kaya nag ask ng ating um, bank account. 
always remember na maging matalino tayo sa pagpili no ng mga taong sasentan natin ng mga gatong information. And syempre, in Facebook, we always promote no na if you feel that the content is abusive and it's not even following the community guidelines set forth, please do report it. We have the power to report any contents that's our, that are actually violative of our community standards. Which also leads me now to my third point. The third point of securing your account. So most of you, I know, you're, you're seeing a lot of um, reminders from Facebook application that would allow you to, or even invite you to check your security features. So just a reminder, lang, no? make sure that you secure your login and log out accounts. And you also use strong passwords, a combination of your numbers, letters, and even characters. So some something that I can share with you in the screen natin, no, is um how do you do your security check, security checkup? So yung login alerts natin, you can also activate it if you have if you see itong anaden um reminder from Facebook, stay secure on Facebook. You can also actually do that. Ako just to share with you, I'm doing it um every other month. Kapag ka nag pop up yung mismo um prompt na to in the platform. I always make sure that I do or I click get started because I wanted to make sure that my account is actually secure. Okay. Next point. So we also have to, uh, we also have to, to consider um, activating our 2FA. We call it 2FA or we call it the two-factor authentication. The goal of the 2FA is that it's an added layer of security with our account. We wanted to make sure that when we when we join social media, when we have uh, um, this kinds of feature, okay, it prompts us, it leads us to a certain instruction na kung saan, o baka mamaya biglang may nag-access ng, ng, ano, ng account ninyo. So it's very important that we maximize this option with the platform because it allows us to add a certain layer, an additional layer of security in the, uh, in the platform itself. And when we talk about stronger passwords, how do we do that? So make sure that you always use a combination of small and big letters. You also use different characters as part of your password. And syempre, it's not too short. No? Um, lately, before, ang alam ko seven character yung, ano, seven character plus plus. But sometimes, or I think ngayon, diba, when you join two different uh, platforms, they will require you at least eight characters already. So in Facebook as well, eight characters up. Make sure that um, we have a combination of these things that I shared with you. Kaya dapat um, maya maya or lagi lagi, we make sure na nagfollow tayo sa ganitong tip because it will also allow us to really protect our profiles better. So now let's proceed with securing your account. So some of you might be asking, paano ko ba na share yung location ko? When if, even if hindi ko naman siya inod, no? Always remember that you can check with securing your account. Baka mamaya merong ibang tao na naka-access ng, ng inyong account at biglang inopen yung inyong location privacy. So always remember that you have the option to set your location privacy and you also have to check your privacy settings. So you have to conduct privacy checkup and of course your security check settings as well. Because the goal is we have to make sure that our accounts Tayo lang yung may access. Alright? So, next. Next point tayo. Protecting our digital identity. Okay? The goal of protecting our digital identity is that aside from putting additional layer to our um, accounts, we have to make sure that we take privacy seriously. So something that you have to consider after this session is to take the Facebook privacy checkup. You can actually get a screenshot of this one, para you can also do it later on. And kung gusto niyo naman gawin ngayon or gusto niyo magpasa about it, you can check it at www.facebook.com/about/basics. Okay? Don't forget lang to follow the instructions in your screen. Now let's proceed. Okay, so. For the privacy checkup tool, it actually um, provides you three, um, five important information to strengthen your account security. So, some of the questions that you can see there are so Facebook uh, privacy checkup. I 
Ito, who can see what you share, how to keep your account secure, how people can find you on Facebook, your data settings on Facebook, and your ad preferences on Facebook. Okay? Always remember that you always have the power, okay, to control your privacy. So make sure lang that you do the privacy checkup because Facebook allows us to do that as well. Second, syempre, na din na pinag-uusapan natin is that we have to make sure na when we talk about our accounts, no, securing stronger passwords is very important. It is vital in our existence in the platform and it is crucial in making sure that our accounts ay pag-aari talaga natin. We do not allow people to control our own personal accounts because again, at the end of the day, it's your own account. It's you. Okay? Parate yun ng sarili mo. So very important that we have to consider those thoughts, especially we allow enabling login alerts para malaman natin meron pang big thing nag-open ng inyong mga accounts. We also have to activate our login approvals and make sure that pag nakigamit kayo ng, ng ibang device in securing your, or even checking your accounts, make sure that you also log out those um, accounts in other devices. So you can get a screenshot of this one para later on, you can push for it, review your account as well. So yun yung pinag-uusapan natin. Those three important things are actually a part of res being a responsible digital citizen na nag-protect pa ng ating sarili, our one self. No? That's the value. That's the tips that we would like to share with you. Now, let us proceed with our family and friends. So how do we protect our family and friends? Let me share with you this kind of scenario. So if you are to comment, how would you react to the following posts? So sa mga gatrabaho, malimit, meron kayo naririnig or receive na messages that will share something like this. I really hate my boss. O kaya naman, sa panahon ngayon, sa Pilipinas, some of you might be seeing a lot of posts stating na ayoko na dito sa Pilipinas. It's such a hassle here in the Philippines. I really hate it here. O kaya naman, yung mga kapatid nyo, kung meron kayo mga kapatid na nag-online classes, no? some of you will have um, to ask the question na parang ano ba yan? Nagkumusi yung kapatid nyo, kuya, tinatamad ako kumasok. O kaya ate, tinatamad ako kumasok. So as a digital citizen, how would you like to reply or how would you comment or react on this post? No? So ito yung question I would like you to, to ponder. I would like you to think about it. No? Which also gives us this simple tip. Okay? As a digital citizen, as a member of a digital community, always remember that digital communication today it's not just anymore like your phones, your tablets, your iPads, or your uh, Android phones, or your even um, laptops. Always remember that when we talk about digital communication, we are actually communicating with your office mate, a real person, a friend, or even your siblings or family members. Okay? In a digital world such as what we have, we are actually communicating to a real person. And sometimes, kasi when we are more kumbaga, indebted already with the whole um, dynamics in terms of the social media world or even the digital community, we often forget that the other people or the other person ay hindi lang AI. No? When we communicate, when we um, participate in online activities, we sometimes we tend to forget that the person or the account that we are talking to is actually a real person. In digital tayo, we always advocate that we have to be very careful. Always remember the idea that behind every screen is actually a human being, which is also like you, have unique experiences and backgrounds. No? And the key word here is to empathize. We always put ourselves in their shoes. We always put our thoughts in their brains as well. The goal of empathy is to really have this kind of ability where we feel what another person is experiencing and understand from their point of view. That is the challenge that we would like to really share with you when we talk about digital tile. 
So, ano ba yung example ng empathy? How we can actually foster empathy? So, as you can see in the screen, no, some of you might be saying na, ah, it's a butterfly. O kaya some of you will say, no, it's actually two faces. But to tell you honestly, it can either be a butterfly or it can either be a two, uh, it can be two faces. No? Or you can actually see both. Same thing with this figure. No? Some of you will say, Kuya, it's actually a face. Or some of you will always say, no, dalawang mukha yan. It's actually two faces. And to answer your, para para ba? to break the, the arguments or the debate is actually a vase, it's actually two faces, or it can be both. So, ganito natin dapat tinitignan or ina-apply yung value ng empathy. When we empathize, we understand, we put ourselves, no? Doon sa lente na tinitignan ng kausap natin so that we would be able to understand better. Which also leads to this question, why is it important to communicate online respectfully? Okay? As a responsible digital citizen, if we really want to protect our family and friends, we have to understand that people in social media have different perspectives and experiences. It varies from a simple one to a more complex one. Okay? It is also our responsibility to always be mindful that we have to respect the values, feelings, and beliefs of others, and even accept the differences that we have. We live in a world wherein respecting these kinds of things puts us no, to a better community, gives us a feeling na, oy, naintindihan niya ako. Well, we, yes, there is always open for debate. There will be um, instances you have to also argue but always remember that at the, end of, at the end of the day, our goal is to respect their values. Okay? Hindi naman pwede na paniwalaan ko yung paniwalaan ng isang kausap ko agad-agad. But I also have to be reminded na, yes, hindi ako maniniwala sa sinasabi mo agad, but I respect your what you're saying. Because that should be it, no? That should be our main priority when we talk about with other uh, things in social media or even face-to-face, -face, no? And syempre, when we respect others and accept our differences, we have this feeling. We have to recognize that behind every screen is actually a human being. We can have conversations that allow ourselves and communities to be better and more helpful. Alam ko, some of you might be um, thinking na parang ano ba to? Ang daming, ano, ang daming, daming, daming um, nag-share ng in disinformation in social media. O kaya naman, bakit ba ito nagano? Bakit ba ito nagkakaroon ng, ano, ng gantong mga ideas? Eh, maling naman. No? Share in po, case in point, no? um, with the recent talks on COVID-19 and what others. So, yung, ano, yung, yung mga bagay na ganito actually sparks conversation. So always remember kama na engage kayo online, you have to make sure that you also respect their thoughts. Because respecting them is, ito yung ano, ito yung regala din sa natin. We always have to respect ourselves or other people's feelings because that's the better thing to do. Alright? Now, let us proceed to the next point. Which is, what are the ways that we can actually practice positive online engagement? So, we have five things that we would like to share with you. Number one, you have to know your audience. As a responsible digital citizen, it is critical that we know how to study our audience. If your content is actually related to a certain community, kindly choose that community para at least maayos to in your Also, we have to practice empathy by putting ourselves in other people's shoes. Siyempre, when we talk about positive online engagement, we have to treat everyone as important as it is. We have to be open and we have to be sensitive to the environment that we are in. Because if we will not be sensitive, if we will not be aware of these things, then we are not practicing positive online engagement. So as 21st century 
users as 21st uh, future 4.0 practitioners we have to be aware that doing these five things promotes a positive online engagement and remembering these kinds of tips that i also shared with you is our way of protecting our family and friends now let us proceed with protecting our community you know how do we protect our community that's also another challenge because as a responsible digital citizen as part of our digital community we have this kind of responsibility that we also have to share with our community so some of the information that we see online can be categorized into three things it can either be a fact it can either be an opinion or it can either be uh, false information or in some other parlance we call it fake news so para lang meron tayong ma-differentiate na mabuti with our discussion for this afternoon let me share with you reminders lang how to categorize how do we categorize or define a fact a fact is actually something that is true and can be proven so in this case we already know or we all agree that this the picture that you are seeing in your screen is an actual apple or is an apple no one will share it or will type in the comment section that uy orange yan we all agree based on our education and understanding that this is actually an apple okay magkaiba naman when we talk about opinion an opinion um is that something that cannot be proven no an opinion can be based on someone's experience or someone's expertise and pwede siya is subject to a certain um fact checking or certain uh, review but always remember that sometimes it's always ano sa lens ng nagsasalita for example if i will share with you that this apple is the only apple in the city that's my own opinion it came from my uh, own experience pero syempre pwede yung sabihin na no it's not meron pang apple sa kabilang street or kabilang barangay or at the other side of the village so that's also um that's how we actually differentiate fact and opinion now let us proceed with false news okay always remember that false news have real life consequences okay false news are information or contents that we share online that has no actual basis or factual basis okay some of the consequences that i would like to share with you is that if we share um false news we actually damage reputation for example kapag nag-share kayo ng information let's say sabihin natin that may kapitbahay kayo na frontliner at sinabi ninyo na yung frontliner na yun ay hindi naman pala po pasok sa trabaho, tumatambay lang, eh well, in fact, almost 24-7 silang nandun to really assess and even help in COVID response, eh pinost natin sa social media, di naman pala totoo. So, we already damaged the reputation of that person. O kaya naman, some of the false news or some of the consequences in real life kapag nag-share tayo ng false news is that we may deceive others and may affect personal safety. Case in point, kapag nag-share kayo ng information or ng, ng idea sa social media, nagsasabi na, ay, hindi totoo yung ano, COVID-19, hindi totoo na yung coronavirus, wala ka lang yan, sabi-sabi lang yan. Eh, what if, meron kayong kasama sa bahay who, who belongs to the, ano, yung vulnerable na age, let's say, sabi natin, lolo-lola, o kaya kids below um, 18 years old or sabi nating 15 or 12 years old eh lumabas hindi nag face mask hindi nag face shield eh biglang nagka covid so wag naman sana pero that's actually a real application when we share false information online o kaya naman di ba biglang nakalit nakarit nakatira kayo or if you're living in the coastal areas biglang sabi sa inyo Oh, hala, nagkaroon daw ng earthquake. Nagkaroon daw ng tsunami. Tapos kayo naman, nagpanic kayo. You, you caused panic to your uh, co-villagers or even your co-barangays. 
eh nag-evacuate sila. Tapos, sabi niyo na, oh, joke lang po, wala lang yun. Eh, sa pagpapost niyo ng joke na yun, nagkaroon pa ng stamping. And marami yung namatay. So that's actually a real application. When we have to consider these things, when we share false news or false information online, there is what we call real-life consequences. At pag nangyari ito, we cannot uh, go back to what we did. So, as a responsible digital citizen, our goal is to really be active frontliners, active um, purveyors of real news, real information. Tayo dapat yung namumuna. Na if we saw something that is actually on the false information side, we challenge it we put, we report it, okay? We don't want false information to be cascaded across the social media platforms and let other people believe. Always remember, as 21st century people or person, tayo, we have the responsibility to really be at the, you know, at the front lines and stating na, oy, hindi tama yan. Sabi nga ni Vino, sabi niya, thanks for doing an introduction of fact, opinion, and wrong information or misinformation. So, just noting here that these three can coexist in a one post or statement. That's true. For example, a post can have a few basic facts, right? But omit some context to favor an opinion of the person posting and then adds explicit lies. That makes things a bit complicated, but with the right training, we can all detect these kinds of posts. Exactly. Thank you, Vino, for sharing your thoughts. Okay? Totoo yun. There are posts na magkakasama sila, no? Na nakakatuwa because you guys already know about it. And tama rin yung sinabi naman ni, ni Michael, no? Na you can also add satire as another type of information. But again, uh, satirical, satirical posts can also be embedded already na with, ano, with, with these kinds of posts. Pero syempre, always remember that satirical posts ay mayroong ibang intention which also leads to um, a separate discussion for that. So as a way of the really, no, um, recapping and even challenging lang some, ano, some of the petty, na meron tayo, we actually prepared, um, how do we know if the news article or post is real or fake? So we shared this, um, or we, we activated this um, content just to test, no, true or false lang naman tayo. How do we know if the news article or the post is real or fake? So the challenge is, I will be flashing different um, context. Okay, you can check to discern if it is true or not. Then you can also click um, in the reaction, but rather the letters that correspond to it. So let's make our chat box active. No, um, konti lang naman to, just to somehow um, lighten the discussion natin. So first question natin. So among those four that you can see on screen, ano sa tingin nyo ang real or fake? So, pag ba mag-critic, mag-analyze kayo ng isang post, do you check the About Us website section? Um, do you have to check the domain, website, or name? Then check the post if, if it is from a close friend. Or letter D, check the picture. So, let's make our chat box active. Sa tingin ninyo, how do we know if the news article is post, uh, posted is real or fake? You can answer it uh, by keying yung mga A, B, C, or D. So game, let's do this. Um, game natin. Letter B from Oliver. Sabi ni Carlos, letter B. Sabi ni Mariel B. It's really B by B daw. Sabi ni Shannon, Cassandra B. Hmm, okay. Lahat kayo B ah. Sige. B and A. Sabi ni, sabi ni Michael, it's B and A daw. Sabi ni Christine, it's A. Tingnan natin. So the correct answer for this ay A, B, and B. Letter D. Right? How do we know if the news article is real? Is we have to check the About Us website section. You also need to double check yung domain. And syempre, check na yung picture. Baka nga naman, quote-unquote, nandun siya dun sa tama. Ma maayos yung About Us section. Maayos yung website din. Feeling nyo professional yung paggawa ng website name. Eh, pero yung tao pa lang nandun, eh, hindi naman pala siya. Eh, di false news pa rin yun or false post pa rin yun. Tama yung sinasabi ni Paul, baka edited. Okay. Yan, ako niya. So next tayo, next um, question tayo. So how do we know if the news article or post is real or fake? Letter 
A, shared by a group or page you follow. Letter B, with sources or evidence from credible institutions. Letter C, shared by more than 1,000 people. Or letter D, author. So, B and B daw. <clears throat> Sige, tinan natin. Sa majority, B and D. Meron pa bang haabol? B, D, sabi ni Nico, ni Fitzgerald, ni Shannon, Cassandra, ni Christine, B, D. Sige, let's proceed. Ay, galeng. Okay. <laughs> so, B and B. We have to check um, sources or pieces of evidence from credible institutions. And we also have to fact check those institutions. And double check the author. Okay? Yay, hey, sabi ni Paul. All right, next question. Among the four, how do we know if the news article or post is fake or real? Spelling error or all caps or dramatic punctuations? Letter B, we have to check the date of post. Letter C, we have to check the date of the article. Or letter D, if the article is just familiar. A, B, C. Nagkita sa chat box natin. A, B, C, B, N, C, A, B, C, A, B, C. Okay. So, we have to check it. Um, the answer now for this, I actually, ano kaya? Sa tingin nyo, ano? Ha? Ano kaya? It's letter D. So, syempre, it's A, B, C. No? The goal is that when we check um, postings, when we check information online, our goal is to have to check yung mga spelling errors. O kaya, feeling nyo naman ang ganda sa simula, like yung mga lead sentences nila, tapos pagdating dun sa mismong, ano, mismong part na ng body, ang daming dramatic punctuation. So, it's actually fake news, or fake information or post. Okay, also, double check the date of the article and date of post. Ngayon, though hindi siya applicable, but others, yung mga pre-pandemic days, kapag biglang umulan ng malakas, especially in Metro Manila, kapag nakita tayo ng walang pasok, maraming nai-deceive agad sa social media, ay walang pasok. Eh, just ko yung post pala two years ago pa. No? So, always remember that as a responsible digital citizen, our um, goal is to check this um, information. Or pieces of information. Because that leads us to practicing the information that we understand or the responsibilities that is actually being shared with us when we advocate ourselves as responsible digital citizen. So be mindful of those things. And just a summary lang to, to what we discussed on protecting our community. So ano ba yung kailangan nating i-check when we are seeing a lot of posts? So we have to double check with sources, yung headlines, we have to check about it. Ito, URL link, guys. Ha? Make sure na you check the URL link. Baka mamaya, yung mga link na pinagpupuntahan natin, yung pinitindot-pindot natin, ay link na pala ng mga hackers. Okay? Make sure that we also double-check that. Okay, yung iba. Ngayon, lately, maraming tumataya sa loto para daw manala at paging milyonaryo. Enter ng enter ng information dun sa isa. Basta nakikita nila, basta loto outlet daw. Ayun pala, kaka-enter nila ng information, yung URL link na yun ay bogus link pala. So always have, ano, we have to make sure that we also check those links. Okay? Some of the things that we have to check, yung dates, formatting, images. No? Even yung author can be a good way to really challenge kung feeling ninyo hindi nyo siya kilala and that author or even content creator is po posting some things na medyo, hmm, big question mark for all of us. Okay? You also have to check if it's the post is actually a humor, humorous one or it's actually a post. Post, okay? And when we see false information online or even in Facebook, our goal is to really do these things. Okay? Make sure that you collect the three dotted line in katabi ng content. Report post natin kapag false information yon. We have to report it as much as often as possible. And we have to check it's actually a false news story. So, nakita ko wasok si Walter. So, maybe he can share with um, some of his ano, um, insights then when we talk about false information or false news in social media. So, always remember that when you report things in Facebook, there is actually a dedicated team who will be reviewing this information and verify the veracity of the information and also check kung 
yung bang mga nire-report natin na yun is really um, against the Facebook community standards. So always remember that no information will be included about the person who filed the report when we reach out or when the team reaches out to the person responsible. And, syempre, as individuals, how can we be discerning with the posts we see? Ito lang naman yung mga, ano, mga simple questions that we would like to share with you and also reflect. No, pag-reflect natin after this um, activity. Have you experienced seeing a news event, event or even an event online thinking it was true because of rumors or a false image or video? Ano yung event na yon? And how did you figure out that the event or that news is actually false? All right? And as we start our, and as we end naman din the, our discussion for this afternoon, let me share with you this video. Every day, people from all over the world share billions of things on Facebook. The conversations that happen here reflect the diversity of this global community. At Facebook, our goal is to create a welcoming and safe environment so people can share and connect with their friends and families. Occasionally, people share content that can be abusive or harmful. We created Facebook community standards to explain what kinds of things can and cannot be shared on the site. For instance, you can't bully or harass someone or post hate speech or threats of violence. If you see something that you think violates these standards, report it by clicking the report link so that we can review it and take action. Not all disagreeable or disturbing content violates our community standards, but by blocking, unfollowing, or unfriending the person or page that posted the content, you can control what you see on Facebook. To learn more about our community standards, visit facebook.com slash community standards. All right. So if you have some questions no, um, about the Facebook community standards, you can check with, our, with Facebook's community standard. And if you would like to have assistance or would like to get assistance from the Facebook Help Center, Please feel free to take a screenshot of this one. No, um, our links to www.facebook.com slash um, help slash uh, you can check it para makita nyo yung ano mga contents meron sa Facebook Help Center. And of course, if your account ay feeling nyo na hack, you can also check www.facebook.com slash hack. Okay, so some of the questions that you might be seeing or you will be seeing in the Facebook Help Center includes what things are allowed on Facebook, how do you choose what uh, notifications you get, or even how uh, why you are seeing error on message saying you can reply to a conversation on Facebook. So those content or information is actually available in our Facebook Help Center. And again, as a challenge for all of us, our goal, okay, as always, is as a responsible digital citizen, as a recap, make sure that we are protecting ourselves, we are protecting our family and friends, and we are protecting our community. Because that is the essence of being a responsible digital citizen. So with that, um, I hope that um, you learned something new for today. And syempre, um, let me remove lang from, uh, my screen muna for the meantime. So always remember that in Facebook, we always value your thoughts. We always value your um, contribution. And we wanted to make sure that when we, we, when we share uh, those information, uh, when we share um, things in social media, we are always here for you to help you out. And as part of our last activity, I hope you would be able to um, answer our post um, activity survey. Um, kindly, ano, uh, punta lang kayo sa Messenger ulit. And don't forget to use our code for today. It's AHA RA04. All right. So make sure na. Uh, open yung Facebook Messenger, type yung digital tayo, and you can actually use our chat box to answer 5 to 10 minute questions. So again, maraming, 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 maraming salamat to all of you. Um, it's been a great afternoon with you guys. So um, this, is, this has been Chart Amazona from Facebook team. Maraming, maraming salamat sa inyo. So if you have some questions, I'll be giving back to Gab. Gab. 
Hi, Chard. Thank you so much for that insightful discussion about Facebook. I'm pretty sure our SK leaders actually have learned a lot from the digital citizenship modules. And sana gamitan nila yung digital tayo na platform. Kasi me, myself, I have used it. I really like how um, it was simplified. Media literacy simplified yung training modules ng Facebook. It was so great, guys. And also just wanted to... Um, um, give give everyone an idea. Si Chard ay isa, kasi I forgot to introduce Chard earlier. He was a Why former not? national president of the 11th National Youth Parliament and currently he is the national convener of Youth Vote Philippines. So sobrang active niya in terms of building safe spaces for youth's critical participation, especially at the time uh, in light of the upcoming 2022 national elections, right? So if you don't have any questions for Facebook, you can actually use the platform that Chard was just talking about um, to actually forward your questions to them later on. But before uh, before you leave, Chard, we'd love to actually give you a certificate of appreciation. Yay. So um, I'm just going to read the citation. The certificate of appreciation is given to uh, Facebook at Philippines for and AHA Behavioral Design for sharing their insights and experience as our part, uh, presenting partner organization during the Media Civics Lab workshop on responsible digital citizenship. Given this 27th day of February 2021 in Manila, Philippines, signed by yours truly and Nina Lewis of U.S. Embassy in the Philippines. So thank you so much for you, that conversation and discussion. Thank you, thank you, Gab. Maraming maraming salamat. And I thank hope so much. Na, ano, maraming kayo matunan for this afternoon. So thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you. Okay, guys, SK leaders, buhay pa ba tayong lahat? I'm pretty sure this is a very long conversation. Um, I hope you're still up. Sana man, nakapagkape kayo. Um, short break, final session. Um, I'll give you guys one minute. Siguro stretch ng konti. Grab your coffee while we wait for Vino of Engage Media. Okay? So sana may mga natutunan kayo from Facebook. We've been working with them for the past three years, they've been giving us a lot of support in different capacities and sana din magamit yung digital tayo that facebook.com kasi sobrang helpful niya na platform, especially when you guys launch your own um, media literacy projects in your respective communities already. Okay. The last session will be about digital rights and safety amid the COVID-19 pandemic. And I, I believe that our speaker is all is all ready and excited to give you guys the final con uh, discussion and session for today. Um, so alam naman natin no na digital safety at the time of the pandemic, lahat tayo dako online. It's really very important. Yung digital rights natin dapat mas malaman natin. Kasi even yung mga yung access to learning, yung mga um, Yung mga, mga conversations, yung mga seminar workshops, even work, they're all being done remotely. Kaya dapat alam natin yung digital rights, yung digital safety natin, at yung digital hygiene, yung basic digital hygiene natin as Filipinos. So, to talk about that is no other than one of our partner organizations, Engage Media. Engage Media is a not-for-profit video for change organization that was co-founded by Anna Halmi and Andrew Lowenthal in March 2005. The organization focuses on creating social change through the distribution of human rights and environmental, video, media, and technology capacity building, research, network development, and digital rights advocacy. Engage Media works with independent filmmakers, journalists, technologists, campaigners, and social movements to generate wider audiences for stories of social change to intervene in the public discourse and to move people to action. So to talk about digital rights and safety is Engage Media's Vino Lucero. Vino is the project and communications officer of Engage Media. Vino is a journalist based in Manila. Before joining Engage Media, he has contributed to investigative reports and data stories for the Philippine Center for Investigative Journalism for more than four years. His writings earned him a finalist spot in the 2017 and 2019 Free Press Awards Newcomer of the Year category, making him the first Asian journalist to achieve such a feat. For the final discussion, guys, on digital safety and digital basics amid a time of a pandemic, let's all welcome Vino Lucero. Hi. Uh, thank you so much for the introduction, uh, Gab. 
So hello everyone, thank you so much for staying. I promise to make this as quick but still meaty as possible. No? But um, can somebody play my presentation, please? Yeah. So um, yun nga, tulad ng nasabi, ang focus natin dito ay digital rights and safety amid the COVID-19 pandemic. I think maganda na yung intro when it comes to digital citizenship. Uh, citizenship. So crucial na uh, palalimin pa natin yung diskusyon. So yung digital citizenship na highlight kanina sa discussions yung uh, responsibility natin as uh, users of online platforms. But there are other facets now when it comes to discussions of digital rights and safety. Of course, meron din connection ang digital rights between the ordinary netizen to its government. Meron din uh, connection ang ordinary user doon sa big tech or yung ating mga uh, big platforms tulad nga ng Facebook kanina. And then meron din um, iba pang relationship na pwedeng i-highlight. But uh, for this session, we will make it as um, concise as possible. Uh, this is just an introductory course. But if you want to know more about uh, digital rights and safety uh, as well as open technology media freedom issues, you can subscribe to the Engage Media Newsletter. So the link is also in the comments section. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, next slide. Okay, uh, defining digital rights. So I'm basic um, understanding kasi when it comes to digital rights, it is the human rights in the digital environment. Uh, ayun yung parang pinaka short na definition for that. But um, when you check the link I sent doon sa comment section, um, during this coconut camp, so yung different um, digital rights um, workers and experts, nag-create sila ng isang article wherein they try to define digital rights. No? Kasi it is crucial for us to highlight some aspects then, especially na iba't iba naman talaga yung context per country. So pero basically, when we say digital rights, ito yung human rights in the digital environment. Next slide, please. Okay, so when we say digital rights issues, um, I think yung digital rights hindi masyadong matunog sa atin. Pero tong mga issues na to, it is something that we can definitely relate. So um, please comment, hashtag relate, if meron something na uh, nakarelate kayo dito. No? Um, yung lack of stable internet connection, especially during the pandemic, na uh, purely online classes tayo and uh, just like us in engaged media, uh, fully work from home. So remote work talaga. Um, yun, may different levels of privileges. No? Uh, some of us are more privileged than the others kasi we have stable internet connection and about halimbawa ng fiber connection yung ating areas. Pero as mentioned earlier ng isa nating participant, no, meron mga areas talaga na far flung na hindi pa naabot ng stable internet connection. That is something na... Um, we raise as a digital rights issue. So when we go to Myanmar, take for example, um, meron kasing ongoing na uh, Myanmar coup, di ba? Military coup. So um, doon, meron nangyayaring internet shutdowns. So that's, you know, another facet. Uh, the government interfering with um, internet connectivity ng ordinary citizens. Um, and then, in turn, um, ang goal kasi nila would be uh, for them to not organize these... Um, protests or to stop uh, speaking truth to power. So merong mga ganong realities. Tapos surveillance through contract tracing data. So um, merong mga contact tracing apps na um, dito sa Philippines, no? I, I think dalawa na yung, uh, since last year, dalawa na yung recognized ng uh, ating Philippine government. Pero did you read the, the data privacy notice of it if you signed up? No, so um, that is something that we need to read, especially if we want to know how to handle the data. Because if we have a statement on the data privacy notice, that says, "Hey, um, this data that you submit to the app, we can use it for other things that are not related to contact tracing or COVID-19." So um, yeah, I think be aware of what you share is something that's definitely we can remember uh, across all platforms, across all situations. No? You're interfering with uh, free speech. Uh, dito sa Philippines, we have the Cybercrime uh, Prevention Act. 
So it is being weaponized to silence uh, dissent, yung um, reporters uh, doing their work. Um, yeah. So especially with the um, recent passage of Anti-Terrorism Act, so this is something then no, na connected the on to digital rights issues. So the next one, lack of FOI open data on COVID-19 matters. So just a quick background, um, yung isa ring expertise ko would be freedom of information. Uh, I co-founded with um, Mayor Vico Soto itong isang um, youth formation on advocating freedom of information. No? It's a uh, Youth Alliance for Freedom of Information. So you might want to check it out uh, if you want to advocate for um, transparent uh, government agencies. No? So, um, ayun, merong difficulty rin, uh, especially early on, doon sa ating public health crisis when it comes to openness or transparency doon sa number of cases, trends, or, you know, meron ding uh, kahirapan doon sa contact tracing then early on. So that is something, the digital rights issue, especially if we're trying to um, exercising freedom of information via digital means, via the foi.gov.ph. Yeah. And then it happened then last year, yung pag-leak ng mga uh, personal and identifiable information ng COVID-19 patients. It happened, uh, I think, mid last year, nag-trend siya sa uh, social media. So yun, yung... Um, Data custody, it is something that we mentioned in the Data Privacy Act. So it is a digital rights issue, especially when it is shared on social media or on online platforms. So, you know, we just want to know knowledge that there are different facets of digital rights na not among citizens. No? There are other players in the uh, digital rights field. Next slide, please. Okay. So isa rin sa ina-advocate ng uh, engaged media yung paggamit ng free and open source software. So essentially, uh, shorthand yan ay FOSS. Um, yung mga iba na familiar names, I think nakaten na rin sila sa ibang webinars ng engaged media. When we say free and open source software, ito yung mga uh, software or applications na transparent when it comes to their code. So you can actually see kung ano yung mga metadata na kinokollect niya sa'yo. So you're aware and you have control, no? Kapag um, you don't want to share that kind of metadata on sa software, you can opt not to um, use the software. So yun yung, yung transparency na level na yon, it's something na valuable, especially to those uh, ordinary citizens, no? Na minsan na victimized noong um, hindi malinaw na data privacy notices. Um, ang free and open source software, then pwede mo siyang tweak and improve and put it out there for everyone to benefit. So it's a community effort. Pwede yon na i-improve siya and maging useful for everyone. So um, that is something that we can uh, definitely highlight. Later on, I will be mentioning some free and open source software and then recommendations then doon sa mga possible na actual changes na pwede natin gawin. But in reality, yung pagiging uh, safe and secure in the digital sense, it is something no, na we build upon hindi siya overnight nagagawa. Ito mga ibibigay ko, these are the basic tips or recommendations. Pero um, it takes long-term commitment, especially if you're working with other people for advocacy or academic purposes. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Now, I, I basically discussed that already. Uh, yung transparency, it is something na very important when it comes to digital security. Next. Okay, and then I mentioned this already as well, yung long-term premium on digital security. It is something that, yes, you can do changes overnight, but you need to bank on it, you know, um, it improves continuously. It is a long-term commitment, talaga, especially when you're working with other people. Uh, next. Okay, um, for us, no, na, lalo na yung mga nag-work sa sangguni ang kabataan dito, um, think of it this way. Hindi lang yung sarili mo yung um, mapoprotektahan mo when you improve your digital safety or security. You know? You're also uh, protecting those that you work with, those na beneficiaries ng mga projects or activities nyo. Kasi um, one good example would be, halimbawa, itong mga um, uh, 
but you deal with um, children in conflict with the law doon sa inyong advocacy organization, take for example. And some of them are minors. Very sensitive yung personal identifiable information nila. And when you improve your uh, digital safety, um, it actually benefits them. Uh, you're making sure uh, or you're improving your security to the point na you have less hesitations na, ay, baka manakaw yung data ng mga bata. Tapos gamitin yun to discriminate against them, to actually harm them, to identify them, and, you know, um, <laughs> make them suffer. Take for example. So, um, importante yun. Kahit hindi ganun ka-sensitive na cases. Take for example, you deal with Um, lalo na ngayong COVID-19 pandemic na yung mga members ng Sanguni ang Kabataan malamang nag-distribute kayo ng mga items na makatulong sa online classes. Ang bawa yung mga um, um, laptop table, yung mga school supplies. So yung uh, take for example dito sa amin sa Cavite one of the barangays, what they did was meron silang online form and then um, they asked a lot of personal identifiable information. And um, that is fine as long as you put a data privacy notice wherein you explain how you will use that data and how you will you secure that data. That is something that's very important. No? Um, of course, and at the same time, in data privacy notice, it will help the reader to decide na, um, acceptable ba to? Nagagamitin nila for this or for that? Or do you see na dapat yung ibang fields hindi required kasi hindi naman siya magagamit to actually facilitation distribution ng ating office uh, ng school suppliers sorry so that is something we can consider as well and by doing so we're actually being good uh, role models doon sa ating mga community members kasi um, i think in the philippines crucial na pataasin natin yung kaalaman when it comes to digital rights and safety so that is something that we were we are working on so thank you so much pala to media civic lab for inviting me to talk about this because I feel like this is something that will benefit us all in the long run. Next slide. Okay, again. So secure communications with team collaborators and stakeholders. I think karamihan sa atin, kapag meron tayong mga group projects sa school or meron tayong, uh, halimbawa, yung mga ating SK leaders sa ating barangay, ang main uh, parang communications platform natin ay Messenger. Sino gumagamit ng Messenger dito? Yeah, for advocacy work. Take for example, you can use again hashtag relate if, if that's uh, something that you do. Or if you use other platforms, take for example, you use Telegram, you use Viber. Yeah, uh, please feel free to share. So um, for us, um, one of the recommended communications platforms would be Signal. So let me type the name. It's, it's not like the Um, cable TV um, provider. Yeah, it's Signal, like Signal app. So um, it is something that recently ay nagkaroon ng increase when it comes to usage kasi meron siyang end-to-end -end encryption and um, very transparent din siya when it comes to the metadata that uh, the app collects, which is very minimal or close to none, I think. So that is something that uh, you can actually Uh, use especially kung sensitive yung ating conversations no um especially if we if you talk about beneficiaries if you talk about um private matters you can definitely use signal app next slide please yon uh secure email service or pgp uh encryption so merong mga um yung pgp ang ibig sabihin niya ay pretty good protection if i got it right so Um, when you encrypt your email, if it gets, um, pag na-interfere siya habang on the way to the receiver, hindi siya mababasa kasi it's a mixture of characters no? na hindi discernible for ordinary viewers. So ang mangyari kasi you have um, a public key na share mo doon sa pagsisendan mo and then uh, he or she or they will use that um public key to actually open your um, email. Uh, you can definitely use this, especially when you're uh, talking to your teachers or school administrators or with your community leaders on things na, and documents as well, if you're document sharing na sensitive and shouldn't be out in public. So um, of course, there are um, email services like ProtonMail that you can definitely use. Um, it's easier to use because um, 
you can actually encrypt there without um, doing the uh, additional steps of having um, parang another app for PGP. Pero I think you still need to establish a public key and a private key for that. Okay, um, next slide. Secure file sharing. Gonna engage media we use next cloud. So um, it is something that is well recommended across countries. But um, I think if it's not accessible, yung uh, file sharing and we uh, use the mainstream ones, um, make sure to limit the access, especially when these are sensitive information. So um, you, can, you can identify um, email addresses that you want to access to edit, to comment, or to view instead of sharing a general link that can be passed on easily uh, to other people by just copy and pasting. So yeah, that's a note. Uh, next slide. Okay, secure video conferencing. So right now we're using Zoom, but uh, there are other free um, alternatives to this. The feature dito sa slide na to would be Jitsi. So you can try it out actually, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So yun yung link, uh, you can click that. So you just create a link and then share it to others na gusto mong maka-attend sa meeting and then you can use it for free. No? Um, so far, um, wala namang uh, explicit um, time limit. But of course, given that it is a free and open source software, sometimes it gets um, laggy kapag, lalo na kapag maraming gumagamit ng uh, resource na yan. So once everyone is there, you can actually lock it. Yung signal, uh, sorry, yung Jitsi na interface para wala na makapasok if everyone's there already. Okay, next slide, please. Browser security. Anong mga browser ang ginagamit natin ngayon? Um, please feel free to share. Currently, ako ang ginagamit ko ay Firefox, which is the one in the middle. And then Brave, yung Lion, no? Um, of course, ayan, may uh, Edge, Chrome, and Mozilla. Yung Chrome kasi it's one of the most popular ones, especially here in the Philippines. So kapag nagde-develop ng mga browser extensions, take for example, uh, Chrome yung unang ginagamit. I saw someone na nagsabi ng Tor. Cool, good job. No, Tor is the most secure one. Pero for us, um, na, you know, um, ordinary users na hindi naman ganun ka-sensitive yung ating... Um, Search, in a search, um, you can use uh, Brave and uh, Mozilla Firefox. No? Yung Brave meron siyang Tor option. So, hindi mo na kailangan mag-download ng Tor browser to actually uh, use Tor and access Tor websites. Okay. Um, may gumagamit pa ba ng Internet Explorer? Unfortunately, dito sa Philippines meron pa. Especially those government agencies na matagal na yung de-develop nila ng database systems to the point na it is only um, accessible via Internet Explorer, unfortunately. So, yeah, that's the reality. But hopefully, uh, we can work with them para i-update yun, especially when uh, we have the clamor, clamor from the public to actually improve those database systems. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, encrypting devices. So, may mga new versions ng Samsung na phone na meron na siyang um, um, capability to encrypt itself. Pero most of the laptops um, depend sa operating system. No? Um, may uh, available na um, crypt, uh, encrypting service, yung iba wala. So, um, this is something lang na, especially when you use your laptop or your devices for sensitive matters, it would be helpful if you encrypt your devices. Um, that would mean na halimbawa, um, may nagtry mag-hack ng device mo, what they can only access would be jumbled characters instead of actual data. So yeah, it protects you. No? Um, minsan medyo pricey siya, but of course, if you are able to get support from your academic institution or from your community to actually use those in specific laptops na ginagamit ng marami, that would actually be great. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, firewall and virus scan. I think marami sa atin ang meron ng firewall and virus scan. So um, yeah, that is something, the common practice. I think um, most computer teachers 
also recommend this. So even sa public computers, na, uh, yun, sa actual classroom experience, merong iba na um, may firewall and virus scan yung public computers or yung common computers. But we can also apply that to our personal devices. Okay, next slide. Okay, virtual private net networks. Sino dito ang may VPN? Um, personally, I use Tunnel Bear. Ayan, si Burns meron ding VPN. Anong VPN mo, Burns? Yeah. While we wait. Ayan, Proton. So, um, kami sa Engage Media, we actually give out, we're currently giving out um, one year VPN subscription for um, Tunnel Bear. So it's a VPN service. Na sobrang cute ng interface kasi um, may bear talaga na sumusakot sa tunnel doon sa interface. So uh, if you see it, it's really cute. Um, we prioritize civil society workers, uh, those um, na may dangerous work na ginagawa, especially journalists, take for example. So if you have, if you need um a VPN service, you can reach out to us. I'll pro provide the link later so you can uh, message us if you really need a virtual private network. It will help you be, uh, it will make you less vulnerable and at the same time difficult to follow across the internet. So, kasi ang mangyayari sa kanya, kukonect ka sa ibang country na server. So, uh, yun, isa na yung way para mahirapan kung meron mang nag nagpa-follow sa'yo virtually. So, uh, it makes, uh, it gives you another layer of protection. Um, next slide. Okay, and then enabling two-factor authentication. I think it was mentioned kanina ng uh, Facebook na meron silang two-factor authentication. You might want to check if yung iba rin ginagamit na apps or platforms ay merong two-factor authentication. May option naman doon if you want to receive a OT, an OTP or may iba pang other ways to authenticate. It just adds another layer of protection for you. Um, next slide. Okay. Uh, na mentioned that it can thoroughly increase password strength and protection. Before, it was recommended to uh, make it uppercase, lowercase, numbers, characters. But um, some of us have difficulty remembering those. So there um, key pass. So essentially, para a uh, password um, wallet of sorts. Na pwede mo dun i keep yung, yung mga password and then you just copy and paste it. And, and of course, um, it's a free and open source software. So you can check out how, how they store your data. Um, pero yun, lalo sa mga mga kalimutan, but still wants to be um, Hi, the onsa strength and protection of password. You can check out yung mga yun, uh, password managers. Um, next slide. Okay, so ayun yung mga initial tips. Pero um, bigger picture topics naman no. Um, it's nice to improve your personal digital safety, but it is also crucial um, to. Um, introduce your colleagues and your extended networks to safer digital tools. Bakit? Kasi um, yung strength ng ating digital safety as a network, it's only as strong as the weakest link. So, dapat talaga maging cautious tayo doon. Sige, protected niya halos lahat, no? Pero may isa na ang password niya ay pangalan ng aso niya. So, na-access yung account, um, na access yung private chats nyo, and then ni release sa social media yung mga private conversations. So, yun, di ba? Uh, yun yung actualization ng um, uh, weakest link example. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Including digital rights and advocacy lens. So, I guess most of us are sangguni ang kabataan leaders, pero meron din sa atin, aside from being part of the SK, um, meron din silang personal advocacy. Halimbawa, meron na push for women's rights and equality, um, gender uh, equality, uh, protection of the environment. Um, mostly, merong digital rights aspect lahat ng advocacy lenses. So take for example, doon sa uh, women's issues and LGBT uh, LGBTQI plus discrimination, um, you know, the harassment, bullying that happens online. So that is partly a digital rights issue as well as a 
uh, gender issue. No? So merong mga intersections talaga. And it would be nice, given that we are in the 21st century, to be aware of those intersections. Kasi it makes our advocacy much more updated and lapat siya doon sa realidad na actually hindi lang offline ang buhay ng tao. Especially during the pandemic. Mostly actually we spend it online. So yeah, that is something that we recommend. Um, next slide. Okay, so uh, another big picture reminder is to choose a privacy first and security first platform. No, um, merong mga websites na very upfront na we uh, do not actually uh, keep your metadata or any kind of data, no, with our servers or. Um, there are platforms that you can only access via secured uh, means by using a VPN or by, by using a Tor browser. Sorry. So um, those are something that definitely we can check out. And um, yung user experience naman for those platforms are very close to the mainstream ones. So you might want to make the shift and then at the same time, um, check no if um yung um accessibility and then at the same time yung ease of use if, if, is it something that's working for me if not we can check out other options but if it, if it works that's great to know okay next slide so okay um speaking of privacy first and security first platform this coming march we will be launching baranggayhub.ph. No? Not to spoil so much the actual launch, but this is something a citizen reporting platform. We, could, we will definitely work with community leaders like you uh, in this uh, Zoom, uh, Zoom conversation. Because the goal naman ito is to connect community uh, leaders and citizens and journalists para mas mabigyang highlight yung community interests and issues na ongoing na. No? Kasi uh, may gap na yung mga citizens, medyo hirap silang kumonek sa journalists dahil, um, you know, may limitation doon sa uh, connection, sa contacts, and networks. And at the same time, um, meron ding limitation from the side of journalists. As much as they want to cover um, those crucial community issues from around the country, they are very limited when it comes to the capacity of reaching out. So yung baranggayhub.ph, it is something na uh, try na bridge yung gap na yon. So as mentioned, Kalina, this is a privacy-first platform. Um, very minimal privacy, uh, very minimal um, metadata yung collect, and that's something that you can actually check uh, doon sa isang part niyan. And then at the same time, it's a security-first platform kasi while you can report uh, using an ordinary browser, you can only continue your conversation with the journalist once they respond in a secure uh, Tor browser. So that's definitely something that we are working on and we look forward to actually working with you on trying this out, improving this further, and maybe using it in a much more larger scale. Uh, next slide. Okay, yan yung uh, mga na-mention ko, privacy first, uh, security first platform. Uh, it uses a trusted and free open source software. So it is powered by Global Leaks. It is a free, it is a, a FOSS uh, software, free and open source software. And uh, may explicit and easy to find use transparency and privacy pages. As much as, uh, as, much as possible, we want to make sure that you have access to these. Kasi um, it's one of the ways we want to build trust no, among our users. Okay, uh, next slide. Okay, so it's launching next month. Uh, just follow the Barangay Hub uh, Facebook page if you want to uh, get more updates about the launch. So yeah, next slide, please. Ayan. So yung link na yan, share ko na yan about digital hygiene. So yung mga pinagsasabi kanina, it's actually summarized in this article, which you can check later after the session. Uh, next slide. Okay, and then the newsletter engagemedia.org uh, slash newsletter. So aside from digital rights and safety, we have uh, content in, uh, in open and secure technology, media freedom, um, video for change, and other uh, crucial advocacy within the Asia Pacific. Okay, I think that's it for me. Thank you so much. Uh, if there are questions, please feel free to raise it. 
Okay, I think back to you, Gad. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, no, thank you so much for that ano, presentation. Buhay pa ba yung mga SK leaders natin? Mukhang ano na. <laughs> um, sobrang ano na, information overload na yung mga participants natin. <laughs> so sabi nila, sabi ni Nico, buhay pa. Oliver, ayun. Sana, guys, marami kayo natutunan for today's session. Introduction to Responsible Digital Citizenship. Take note ha, introduction pa lang to. Like, marami pa actually. My media literacy awareness pa, it will bleed out a little more into critical thinking and fake news and then social media and law. Tapos lastly is culture of positive participation. So, Vino, before ka umalis, ha, we have a certificate for you for Engage Media. Um, thank you for the presentation about digital safety and rights at the time of the pandemic. I'll just read the citation. Certificate of Appreciation is given to Engage Media for sharing their insights and experience as our presenting partner organization during the Media Civics Lab Seminar Workshop on Responsible Digital Citizenship. So signed by yours truly and Nina Lewis of US Embassy in the Philippines. We will actually give these physical tokens to you guys uh, because we do that in Break the Fake Movement. Nothing can actually bar us from, not even a pandemic can actually bar us from doing some sort of physical interactions. Kahit sa tokens man lang, ano? So SK Leaders, um, it's a wrap, but not totally as we're just starting the next part of our journey. Um, the Media Civics Lab once again thanks all of you for participating in the first seminar workshop. Information overloaded out, sabi ni Leo Lauzon. Um, this is a first session only. Um, take note that we hope to see you again in our next webinar on March 13. And then the next one after that will be March 27, April 13, and then April 24 will be the graduation assuming that you were able to complete all of the seminar workshops and breakout sessions. For those asking about the certificates, we will provide certificates after the fifth workshop on April 24. If you haven't finished reading the reading list, it's a PDF file that contains quizzes, guides, and articles about digital citizenship. I've uploaded that, that in the Facebook group. Please finish reading them over the weekend. And please take note that we will be dropping the link to the lecture feedback form in the Facebook group. So make sure that you are part of it. Give, give us some insights about how the, how the speakers actually gave their conversations or their discussions, how the breakout sessions or workshops happened, and things that we could actually improve on. Make sure that you're part of the messenger group as well. Connect with our guy in Media Civics Lab named Patrick Makiso. He's just, not just a random person messaging or texting you guys. He will actually remind you for, every, for everything that's going on for the next succeeding workshops. So as early as now, please block the dates, March 13, March 27, April 13, April 24 for the succeeding webinars. And then next week, we, will actually be, we won't be having a seminar workshop, but we will be having a watch party for the Media Civics Lab webinar on responsible digital citizenship that happened last year. That was the webinar that hosted TJ Manotok, um, uh, Melinda De Jesus of CMFR, and many other top-notch guests and top caliber experts from the media literacy and education field. So we will be actually playing that from the Facebook page of Break the Fake Movement. Thank you, everyone, for the 45 SK leaders who hang on until this time. I hope you're going to enjoy the rest of the weekend and hope you hope to see you again on March 13. Bye.